Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Welcome, everybody, to something that we have put possibly entirely too much effort into setting up. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is, it's finally here. Welcome to the beginning of the Age of Ashes. Our new campaign for a new edition and an almost entirely new game of Pathfinder now. We wrapped up the War for the Crown last week, and there was no way I was leaving you guys without Pathfinder content for more than one week. So, let's learn some Tui. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very, very flexible. It's very interesting. We didn't stream it here, but most of the people around this table did play through uh, the Fall of Plaguestone with me within the last month or two just to get a little bit of a handle on the system just so we could prepare ourselves some when we weren't diving in completely and totally blind because oh man is there a lot of meat here and i'm excited for it and i hope you guys are excited because seriously this has been a work in progress for i don't even know how long but how cool paizo channel friends is having a table how neat is this? We have ascended beyond the mediocrity that is a virtual tabletop. And now we actually have a proper setup. Now we got a new player. Now we got a new player. We got that guy. <laughs> Hi. That guy's new. This is Matt. Ooh. How you doing, that guy? Um, I'm excited to uh, to definitely play in a brand new system. So I am also excited to definitely play in a brand new system. <laughs> so before we start going bananas here, because not only is the system and the campaign and the players largely new here, uh, of course we are on a very different setup. This is a wild change from the Roll20 and all just hanging out in a voice call playing virtually that we have been doing for the War for the Crown for the last year-ish on this channel. So table microphones and cameras and everything is, is a very, very different beast. So feel free, absolutely, I have chat back here that I can see. If there's anything wrong with like the audio or there's any video problems or anything, please do let me know because one of the biggest differences that I, running this, am going to have is that I can't I can't really see the stream <laughs> because it's back there. And that's a, uh, I'm at a table doing table things here and I don't have like a, I don't have a separate guy to run the show. I, I'm still doing all of that, but I can't actually see my streaming software. So I'm, I'm counting on you. I'm counting on you in the chat. You specifically <laughs> that thinks that I'm talking to everyone else, but not them specifically you to let me know if something goes wrong, something sounds wrong, or whatever. So, with that, let us begin. This adventure is going to take us someplace very different. Someplace far away from the... Nah, not terribly far away, but a few countries away from the tall door we've been living in for the past year or so. Out to a relatively newer nation known as Isker. Far out to the west out on the eastern borders of Cheliax, the nation of Isker is a colony. It's existed for some time a little too far from the main government centers of Cheliax, from the rule it properly, a little too far for them, for it to be worth the effort even to reap the taxes, and a little too underpopulated for them to care enough to expand and build infrastructure for that. So Isker exists almost in a state of eternally forgotten. It's there. It doesn't really have a whole lot of infrastructure. And as such, the town where we begin our adventure, Breachill, is kind of just a lone wolf. A little community of about 1,500 people existing out in the foothills of the Five Kings Mountains, far from any major trade routes, barely exposed to any commerce at all coming in from other cities or countries, and largely doing its own thing. Very close to Blakestone, but that doesn't matter for right now. That's just a throwback from earlier. 
You might say it's a good thing Plague Stone didn't explode. It's probably a good thing Plague Stone yeah. didn't explode. <laughs> this this <laughs> entire <laughs> thing could be totally moot. I don't think Breach Hill would have been quite in the blast radius uh, had things not gone spectacularly near the end of that adventure, but... It depends would, on which way the wind was going. It would have been close enough that there may have been some out of uh, my poor fallout. But it is here, in the backwoods, that we begin our adventure. In Breach Hill, there is an archive, a main building... Uh, where they keep much of the town's history, what records and documents the city council, what government there is, does bother to keep hold of, and serving as the closest thing to a library the town really has. It's run by a man named Joral Black Tusk. Your standard half-orc character, doing his best to break through the stereotypes of his race's existence. And currently assisted by a halfling. A short, plucky, and uh, very very peppy individual over here, working his best, not able to quite see over the, the lip of the table, running around with scrolls and files, sorting things, assisting as he does through the days while in between his research in the archives. And so as, you, as you're... Uh... Shelving a couple of things here, sorting through a small pile of scrolls. Jural kind of looks over and just raises an eyebrow. I was fairly positive, bro. He'd be elsewhere by now. Don't you have business to be attending to? Business for what? As far as I was aware, I was working here all day. And uh, before he can respond, another man enters. Tring. Through the front door. <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, in comes, uh, Dalren, uh, whom you've probably seen before. He's been spending some time working here, but this time he's actually wearing this, uh, bulky, uh, thick, heavy, reinforced, um, leather armor. Looks like a complete antique. Uh, his pack is, has a heavy backpack on. There's a brace of javelins across his back that's clattering together, kind of oddly. And he's kind of moving like he's not really used to it. Jorel, Jorel, where are you? And uh, he turns, he has a door opening, moving forward, and sees who it is, and a smile crosses his face. And don't run! All right. Hey, I wanted to stop by. I know I'm not usually here today, but uh, I'm going to join the Call of Heroes, actually. And uh, it's, uh, I thought I'd break out my old, my old equipment back from my younger days. And he kind of looks you up and down a little bit surprised. And looks back towards Ruhr. The smile just growing on his face, looks back at Dol Ren. <laughs> Oh, I never took you as much of a jokester, Dalren. You seem to be fairly straight-faced most of the time that I've known you. Well, I appreciate that you think I'm so meticulous I'd put this much effort into a joke. But, uh, no, no, uh, I was uh, at the dream house. A uh, bit of a vision. Uh, the abbot may have slipped me something, I'm not positive. But uh, a bit of, I'm convinced, this is the way forward. This is the way I can, com I can continue my research. The call to heroes is the way to go. As it is, I might not be able to be here on time to help with my duties. You're rather excited about this, I, I can tell, but... Dolren, you have difficulty lifting a book. I do not. <laughs> I'm just very meticulous and careful with it. No, no, no. I, growing up in the Osirian deserts, I was well-trained. Uh, and we, everyone had to be able to be ready to pitch in in the case of an emergency. I haven't gone completely soft yet. I'm going to peek myself out from behind the table, looking over at you making quite the ruckus. Is that today the the call of heroes? Well, yes, yes. Uh, almost, we need to be there in about an hour. I need to be there in about an hour, in fact. You got to be kidding me. Rawr. Let me go grab my things. Grab your thing? Grab your things? I was planning on attending, yes. I seem to have forgotten the day. The call of heroes? <laughs> My friend, aren't you an accountant? Essentially, a ledger writer. I mean, I understand the Saren Ray Inquisition. And aren't you a researcher? I don't know what right business either of you have got following up on this. This is for mercenary sorts, adventure and lots. I do have minor blessings of Saren Ray, and I would be happy to proselytize to all of the new adventurers in town. Well, it would be I'm very not... good to have someone who I know, a familiar face. He just kind of puts his hands up. Droll, you should come with us. That I won't be doing, lad. Just shutter this place and come with us. It'll be fun. Gonna have to file that one under no for never happening. Seriously. You seem like you've put some thought into this. Uh, Dalren, you don't... You've never been a man to rush blindly forward into something. 
Uh, at least if it wasn't something pertinent to your research, and I hardly see how rushing off to do the gods knows what. I think that's exactly the problem, actually, but, uh... No, no, it seems this is indeed the way forward, uh, although I don't quite understand it fully yet. And, uh, with a shake of his head, amused and a little bit worried about two of his friends in town possibly running off to get murdered. Two bookworms. <laughs> yeah, two, two bookworms. These two nerds <laughs> running off to go to the Call for Heroes, uh, a monthly gathering that the town council puts on here in Breach Hill to assemble, well, adventurers, mercenaries, swords for hire, to help them deal with things beyond the discretion of the town guards. It's not a particularly huge city, and they don't, they've only got so much manpower to deal with things happening inside the town's walls. But occasionally, there are problems elsewhere. Travelers on the roads being attacked by either reported bandits or monsters, uh, and just any kind of troubles that would concern the citizens of Breach Hill, but either not be worth or be too dangerous to send off their loosely trained town guard to go deal with. That is in fact today and happening very soon. What will they need assisting with this month? Nobody knows. Will anyone uh, be able to rise to this call they might need something specific there's there's no real advanced knowledge of where the call for heroes is going to go just if they that they happen to need research if they need work. researchers it is a good product for the show <laughs> we got the, it the town council knocked out a park on this one easy <laughs> nat 20 we got researchers we got researchers up and down meanwhile elsewhere in town at breach creek lumber out on the outskirts Nereen Howardo is listening to a report from one of her scouts, one of her rangers that she's called on sometimes to protect the lumberjacks. Out here in the footlands of Isker, there are dangers. Creatures and monsters significantly more than bandits, as there's not really enough people out here to pose a large bandit threat, but every now and then you need some amount of protection. And this self has stepped into that role many times. And Esmus is tightening the straps on his leather armor and readjusts his uh, white hair. The um, pale Whisper Elf kind of steadies himself as he's giving the report to Noreen. And so this time, no injuries, nothing to report otherwise, and no beasts to speak of. I mean, she stands very straight, very proper, watching and listening. Very well, then. I suppose that's for the best if we're going to lose access to your services for some time. Esphis, it's been a pleasure. Truly, joining this company would have been difficult without your assistance throughout the last year or two. And I don't know if there are anyone else here within Breach Hill who could have stepped up to the plate as you had. I appreciate your assistance, as you would well appreciate the pay, I assume. Of course. But... Nobody knows what's going to happen with the Call for Heroes. You don't know who the council is going to be asking for. You don't know what sort of services they'll need. It's a risk. A risk beyond just dealing with the rogue boar or bear in the trees around our lumber camps. It could be more dangerous. It could be further away. It could be something even beyond your ability to assist with. So I see no need for such formalities here. You may very well be back assisting us next week. Well, then, don't consider this a farewell, just until the next time you need the Hand of Thar. Well, as much as I do enjoy your company, hopefully that's not for some time. I do very much prefer when things run more simply and easily, and outside hands do muddy things, however friendly they may be. But truly, Asmus, I've appreciated all of your assistance. If there's anything I can do for you, never hesitate to ask. Of course. Just stay in touch. Uh, mother and father will occasionally need a job as well. Of course. And uh, should I need services and should this call for heroes work out for you, as don't take me wrong, I do hope it does. I'll need her any assistance as well. It's Isker. The lands are never truly safe. And they're never truly quiet either. <laughs> that much I wish was not true. But oh well. Best of luck then. Caden, watch over you. Thank you, Noreen. Now, further still outside of town, 
out of the main walls and the outlying regions, some of the farms that supply Breach Hill, uh, bringing in much of the populace's food since there's not really enough trade to sustain the citizenship here. One man has a farm and a dream. Uh, and you can hear kind of a clunking coming from the other room and, and some jangling going on and it's rather loud and awkward. And as it kind of quiets, the door slams open from the back room and a man comes walking out. Nods his cowboy hat, you know, <clears throat> adjusts his shoulders and his shiny, newly polished breastplate. Like, darling, I'm ready. I'm ready for and, the call. Uh, out, <laughs> out on the back landing, <laughs> right outside your humble little shack on the edge of your farms. Uh, your wife, Bonnie, is just sweeping up the, the dirt around the area, trying to keep it at least somewhat clean around the door frame, so that your children don't t track everything inside where it has to be dealt with stomped into the ground. And without even turning around, she just calls back to you. I was pretty sure that mean was supposed to be around noon. Shouldn't you be getting into town by now? What, what time is it? What time is it now? That armor took a long time to get on. I wasn't <laughs> expecting near the hassle. And and uh, is she still without a, without a break in the broom? And Buford Middleby Bates, I swear by whatever gods there may be watching down over this world, if you miss your calling down that that, I swear I'm but I herself gonna have to come down here and poke you into action. It can't be that. It can't be that late. I'm I'm sure we have enough time for a little quickie. You know this cod piece comes off just, real easy. She just turns around. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, <laughs> now I know you ain't got that head on straight. Get! And just swing yes, the boom at Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and I uh, get a little hitch on my step and start walking off me like, you tell those boys when they come back from skeeting, you you tell them I love them and I'll see them uh, in a bit. Why, she just pokes the broom at you. You! And she shuts the door. <laughs> now... There's one more resident of uh, Breach Hill now who is uh, feeling this particular call here at her humble dwelling. How goes things, your preparations for who knows what? Um, Resme is actually uh, sitting in her living room um, in her robe uh, reading a book. She knows today is the call for heroes, but... The druids have not come to ask her to attend yet, and she's kind of confused as to, as to what's keeping them. And almost as if an answer to your confusion, you hear a quick set of raps on your front door. <sighs> Finally, she says. Um, she uh, gets up and takes her robe off, and as it turns out, underneath her bedroom robe is her entire outfit that's already been on. <laughs> 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 necklace and uh she maximum ready she's just maximum ready um her hair is actually um all done up in a braid um it's red and flowing um her very prominent elf ears uh showing dark blue um almost black eyes um she is absolutely gorgeous i'm um, wearing her mother's <laughs> necklace um, she just looks fabulous, and she's ready to go. <laughs> and she's sitting in her God. house with a bathrobe on, awaiting her moment <laughs> to emerge from her cocoon <laughs> like a beautiful elven butterfly. She negligently throws her robe over the chair and goes to answer the door. Uh, yes, who is it? She says, looking very innocent and yeah. unexpectedly. And as you open the door, you look out and then down as you see a halfling dressed very simply with almost unkempt dark hair uh, just curled around his head and he hands folded in front of him looks up to you with ser uh, very serious expression resume galadherman well met brother well met indeed the time has come i believe you are ready for this even if you may not now understand what it means i'm ready very well then Make haste to the town hall. Your destiny awaits you. It's as I thought. Thank you. Um, she uh, bids him farewell um, in Druidic, 
and uh, bows to him. And he steps back out of your way. And the last he says before you move on, uh, replying in Druidic, the wind and the waves guide your step. Uh, she nods, and she actually takes off um, at a run because she knows that she's probably a little behind. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> so the five of you from your own various uh, areas end up converging around the outside of the town hall. And as you make your way down through Breach Hill here, you would be able to, uh, you would be passing over the creek, the river that runs through the middle of town, most of you coming from the north side here, and past the large uh, monument circle, one of the few very visible attractions of Breach Hill outside the town hall itself. The city is largely rather plain as it just has cropped up here in the foothills and only really expanded and built into what was necessary. The farms outside, homesteads and shops, smithies and various workers within. But it centered around this feature. Uh, the side of the river that supplies most of the water for Breach Hill, a, a circle of six enormous wooden water towers around a centered, massive stone statue of Lamond Breachton himself, who the, town, who the town was named after, who is largely credited for its success, and who had guided these humble folk in their early days with his knowledge of magic, wizardry, and the ability to read, combined in the perfect triumph, uh, trifecta <laughs> Of civilization <laughs> that totally, you now see before you. Totally a human. <laughs> yes, and he is totally a human. He was a normal human named Lamon Breachton, who had no strange qualities about him whatsoever. The Definitely archives are didn't very specific about a this. A lot of people. Yes. Very normal man. And uh, as you approach the town hall here, as noon ticks ever closer, you can see a decently large assortment of people outside. A lot of the townsfolk that you would all recognize, those of you who have made your lives here, or those of you who have been here for at least a few years, however short that may seem to an elf, you would recognize a decent number of the faces in this gathering crowd. Uh, one of them that you may not, that may look relatively new to you, is a small, strangely dressed goblin. And... As she totters back and forth, clearly concerned, worried, possibly just confused, you can't help but wonder oh, what on so earth cute. led to this. She has a black cap, almost like a graduate's hat, flat and square on her head, and a simple white gown covering her tiny green body other than that. Uh, with fairly large diamond-shaped, but what appear to be plain stone marble earrings set in, she is something. But this Call of Heroes being a monthly event here in the town does always attract a decent crowd. It's an interesting show, if nothing else. Uh, everyone gets to interact with the town council, hear what it is that's going on, these fantastic stories of these adventurers, these mercenaries that have made their name here coming through. They get to see the up-and-coming legends rising up alongside possibly even Lamond Breachton himself, forged here at this most simple, most humble of beginnings. Now, the five of you, I'm sure, would at least recognize each other. You, you may not be particular friends or even very close, but you've all been around town for some time, and again, it's not particularly large. And looking throughout the crowd, it's fairly obvious that most of them are just here to watch. It's about 60-ish of the various townsfolk just here to spectate. Sometimes they show up monthly, sometimes there's just nothing better to do and figure they might as well. But looking throughout the crowd, there are only a couple who look like they are geared up and very ready to present themselves for this. First of all, you five, nearly all armored, uh, armed, or at least dressed for the occasion. And another group 
of four soldiers uh, that you don't recognize from town. Uh, with simple scale mail armors, uh, armor long swords and spears slung across their backs, and a light crossbow dangling from each of their hips. Uh, they've all got a dark green handkerchief drawn either around their neck or around the top of their head, and the four of them are standing together talking and laughing. Uh, they've clearly come as a group to this. Mm. So, the five of you arrive at this crowd and immediately would all see each other and realize that these these are your fellow adventurers, I suppose. Adventurer hopefuls. We haven't even ascended to adventurer yet. These are your fellow <laughs> maybe adventurers. Maybe it works out. But... Is there anything you uh, wish to do or say or We're checking simply out. wait? We have uh, quite a few. Uh, uh, we seem to have a few other locals here uh, who seem to have uh, be- or are coming along with us. Good morning, uh, uh, Dolorin. It's Dolorin, right? Oh yes, yes. Have you read some of my books? No, but uh, you certainly stand out in the library. Um, I don't see very many. Um, elves around, and certainly not ones wearing uh, such uh, appropriate garments. Well, I don't normally wear my armor when I'm at the archives. Uh, However, uh, it seemed uh, appropriate to bring it along, given the occasion. Uh, Rur, uh, you've met uh, Resme, haven't you? The druidic uh, emissary to uh, to the town? On occasion, yes. I've never had a full conversation. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hello. Judging from the pack, it seems you'll be coming along as well. Uh... So it would seem. Um, and uh, Esphus, is it not? It is. Esphus, my man, it is good to see you. I cannot believe that you're going to be coming along with this thing. It's good to know that someone could, you know, someone of your quality is going to be along with us. I mean, you could you could shoot like a you could shoot like a pine cone. No, smaller than a pine cone. Like like a leaf. No, smaller than a leaf. Like. Like a like a fingernail off of someone's hand at a hundred yards, and I just I mean it blows me away. Is, is she Buford. wearing a a breastplate and a and a cowboy hat? Well, he this is, is well, it's to keep the sun out of his eyes. Oh, I suppose man, that you makes are sense. A smart man, are you going to become long too? Because you know we need some smarts around here. Me and uh, Esphus here, are not known for our smart ability, right there, Esphus. Sure. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't think we've had too much of an occasion to be introduced. I'm um, Dalren, uh, not from here, obviously. But ah. I, I've been in town for just a little while, uh, stopping through, and uh, I guess actually it's been about three years now. But uh, I haven't had much of the opportunity. I guess uh, I assume that you two work outside the walls of the town primarily. Yeah, it's just, uh, it helps down with Lumberyard a lot, and I, uh, yeah, I do odds and ends here and there. We've got a farm up north. But uh, it's uh, you must do like smart people things around with all the fence folk. Oh, well, I'm I'm just a writer and I help organize smart books people and things with the fancy folk. That well, sure is right uh, there. That's fair, I suppose, but I've never seen such a fine set of kit on with farmers. Are all Breach Hill farmers so well equipped? Well, thank you. I got this from my pa, but you know, we take good pride in this thing. Ancestral armor. Yep, this is it sure is. It's been our family for a long time. My, well, I suppose it's been in my family for a while too, but. It was new when I first got it. Don't you elves live like forever or something? It's it's a long time. Or yes. something. What is your your armor from like dinosaurs or something? Like I don't know what he made it out of actually. <laughs> I was well, very small. <laughs> well, it looks good. It looks well, looks pretty sturdy. I, I'm sure I'll get used to it again. It's been quite some time. So around that time, <laughs> it's so hard to not laugh. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good, I love it. (laughs) Around that time, the guards standing out in front of the town hall, a pair of them, one on either side, uh, would open up the front doors and allow the crowd here to slowly start to filter inside, uh, making their way into the reception chamber in this western wing of the hall. Uh, Now this is where the Call for Heroes is always held. Uh, as well as any kind of uh, town facing, uh, town gatherings or meetings, any sort of discussion of developments or anything that involves the public. And it, it's, it's arranged as such a massive seating chamber 
with just rows of benches going out on either side as you enter. With a podium on the far end, with five smaller desks sat in a row, one of each of the town's council seated behind them. Uh, a couple of them talking amongst themselves, a gnome and a dwarf on one end. On the center, a uh, fairly serious-looking man with a twirled gray mustache and a massive gnarled nose sorts through some papers. On the other end, two more counselors just sit relatively quietly, smiling, greeting some people they recognize, waiting for everyone to filter through inside. So... As you make your way in and find your seats. Turn on Detect Magic. Turn on Detect Magic? That's not like a thing you turn on. It's a spell you can cast. Oh, that's right. That's not just like an active... Just start screaming. <laughs> it's like, Detect <laughs> Magic <laughs> sets <laughs> on. on. So, Power of my blood, come to me and show me that which is hidden. It's in the totally middle of happening. a quiet room. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's kind of quiet and down and filtering in the back. You just hear like incantations. <laughs> magic. It's not a, not a subtle thing, Detect Magic. <laughs> so, so I imagine not that. No. Okay, fair enough. That makes, that makes the most sense to me, I suppose. So, as you make your way in, filling up these seats with the other 60-ish people that are in here, it's a decent turnout this month. You see the four other armored men and women uh, work their way up near the front on the right side and take a section of one of the benches for themselves, uh, squeezing in as well as they can, but wearing scale mail, they are going to take up more space on a bench than... Well, your normal townsfolk. Uh, the five of you who had an opportunity to introduce yourselves outside, are you heading to sit together? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah, yeah so that's why fine. Not? Yeah. We're all locals, and it seems it would make sense that we'd all sit together. We'd have to probably come out of the crowd eventually anyway. Fair enough. That does make sense. And uh, as you find your seats and everyone starts to settle and kind of quiet down, you hear a few bangs of a gavel up from the head counselor seated in the center up on the podium. With that, everyone falls near silent. Uh, the old man stands up, hands folded before himself, and looks down over the crowd. He's, uh, you would all know this man, Baltus Burton, uh, head of the town council, has been for probably most of the time that most of you have been here, if not all of it, uh, for the last couple decades. He's largely run things, and time and age have started to wear on him a little bit. He's a bit hunched over. Not as young and spry as he used to be, I don't know, 70 years ago, <laughs> when his youth. But as he smiles out over the crowd, he waits a moment before beginning. Welcome, neighbors and friends. And his, his voice carries out ringing through the room with much more power than you would expect given his relatively small stature. The Breach Hill Council's monthly call for heroes. I am Council President Baltus Burton, and these are my associate counselors. As he gestures to the two seated on either side of them, and they all nod or give a brief wave. A brief wave. On behalf of my colleagues beside me, I ensure that we will hear and consider today's petitions with the utmost discretion and care. There is no existence without community, as our town charter says. And uh, those of you who may have been to the these Call for Heroes before, it's largely the same. Uh, this introduction is largely the same each time. He looks down sorting through his various papers uh, to make sure he has everything arranged properly before he begins his uh, his proper pitches for whatever it is that they have brought around this particular time. And as he looks down through his uh, and sorts out, he pulls up one stack of papers. Today our agenda will include a pair of petitions. Uh, first of all, Master Fatal B. Vusker has run into some issues with banditry on the roads northwest of town. 
Uh, Mr. Vusker, you may now take the stage and pre present your case to the heroes and town assembled before you, so that we may lend what aid we can in your trying time. And, uh, Vusker, who you would also all probably recognize, again, just for being around town, there's only so many businesses here, is a much, uh, it's uh, an interesting juxtap juxtaposition next to Counselor Burden. He is much younger. Uh, he stands very tall, very proud, and he takes himself quite seriously. He walks up on the stage and raises one hand. Uh, thank you, Counselor Burton. Citizens of Breach Hill and hopeful heroes, he speaks true. Unfortunately, my business is one of those that does re uh, rely on some amount of outside trade, and beyond that, uh, many of you may know that I run my wagon shop out near the edge of town, uh, Vusker's Carts. My services are of very little use to those who fear their wagons, uh, their trolleys, and their transports will be raided on the road. It pulls at my heart to do such a service for the people of our town only to have my work and theirs pillaged by these vandals. This has been a recurring issue within the past few weeks. What it once seemed like it may have been a one-off attack or potentially a victim of unfortunate circumstances twice has proven itself to have more consistency than any of us had hoped. I petition to the good council and to the call for heroes, whoever will take our task, to track down these bandits and bring them back to justice for the town. Not just for myself, but so that any may travel the roads to the north safely, without fear of blade or thievery. And uh, that he turns back again. Uh, Council President Burton, if you will. And the old man stands back up again. Says, Who are the heroes in attendance today who would take this task upon themselves? Well, it seems like we've guys. Yeah, and as I, you, uh, yeah, man. As, man. You, as you, you guys kind of look at each other, uh, mm -hmm. uh, immediately up in the front, one of the men in armor stands up and holds his fist up to his chest in a sort of salute. Council President Burton, my company, the Singing Spears, will take this contract. You will find our pedigree one of success, victory, and prompt fulfillment. Not once have we been bested, not once have we sloughed a contract foisted upon us, not once have we failed once enlisted for these tasks. And uh, as he looks around, the rest of the, the hall is now all just focused on this man up the front. By my honor, I, Sig Jones, petitioned you for this contract. And uh, bows his head. And the counselor looks down at him. Says, very well. Sig Jones and the Singing Spears wish to deal with this, uh, have put their blades and their lives forward. Do we have other heroes in attendance today? Aye. Yes, indeed. Uh, y yes. Do we need to have a name for ourselves? I or, don't, a, I don't know but if as, we're... As, uh, <laughs> as Buford kind of calls out, aye, it stands up, and then you just sort of look down and you mutter among yourselves, and everyone kind of turns to look at you. And the counselor is just looking at you, and you guys go, do we need a name? Are we like... <laughs> <laughs> we're standing I, up. Yeah, I, that's us. I, These guys. We're the, us. the I have a name, mighty but... group is here, uh, and, and... I'm standing, you just can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's we're five standing, of us. shorter than the people in front of them sitting. <laughs> so there's like three of you, then a gap, and then like resume yep. at yep. the end, because there... they actually can't see Ruhr standing in the seats from where they are. And, uh, we're here. Uh, this mighty group of warriors that have also done things. We are, uh... <clears throat> We're at your service. <clears throat> yes. And the, uh, counselor looks down at the group of you and smiles. Uh, very well. You lot have offered your lives and your blades to this task. Uh, do we have any other heroes in attendance today? And at that, there's a pause. There's no one else immediately jumps forward. 
And you can see, give me a perception check. Just everybody can go ahead and roll me one here in the group. 17. Well, as is appropriate, I can't actually see over everyone. <laughs> I rolled a hard one. The rear critically fails because you can't see over the people in front of the benches in front of them. Uh, 17. 17. 17. 17. 15. 15. Do we have anything higher than 17? All right. So uh, the two 17s and the 15, the three of you uh, would see up at the front the singing spears, this mercenary company, all just sort of snickering among themselves at what appears to be a literal farmer and some <laughs> random elves. And I, I, didn't you, did you like my accent? Standing around <laughs> in, in the back. They're, they're just like, one of them sort of gestures back to you and makes a little motion with his hands and his buddy next to him is... <laughs> they're, they're sort of laughing. They, they think this is amusing. I can't really blame them. They're probably pretty damn amusing looking. But the uh, for a group called the Singing Spears, I don't think they have any right to cast we've stones. We've all these majestic elves around here. They they don't got no room to talk. The council president uh, Burton then turns this very well. Uh, we will, uh, uh, we the councilors shall quickly cast our votes and decide which group we will trust with this task. Uh, one moment, please, for our deliberations. And as he uh, sits down, uh, the other counselors all get up and come gather around his spot there at the central desk. Did he just say there's a chance they'll pick us over the train? And they lean in for group? about three seconds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's a written test? Before they all just kind of nod and he's like, yeah, 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 okay. And they, all just go back. <laughs> they all go back and sit down. And he uh, stands they, back they up. Legally deliberated. Yeah, he, they all just kind of come in here, those guys. <laughs> Burton stands back up. Very well. It is decided that the town council of Breach Hill will sponsor Master Fatal B. Vusker's request for the Singing Spears to investigate this bandit activity north of town. At the conclusion of our meeting today, please meet with Mas Master Vusker. And Councilwoman Gardania, as he motions to the woman immediately to his right, uh, they will go. They will cover the details of your task, your payment, and the deeds we will record upon your your success. May the gods watch over you. And uh, the four mercenaries in the front all just let out a quick cheer. The leader stands up, salutes again, and bows. Just kind of looks back at the group of you. Darren's kind of like politely clapping. Nods. I just sits back. A little down. bit of a well, wave. I, well, I'm kind of glad they got chosen because, you know, that northwest side of town is right next to my house. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll keep. They'll, they look pretty competent. They'll keep the road Aye. safe. Yeah, absolutely. So then the counselor continues. So our agenda does contain one more petition for this month. Uh, Miss Warble. Our very own ambassador to the Bumble Brashes of Hell Knight Hill requests the help of heroes for a matter of utmost importance. Uh, Miss Warble, if you will, present your task. And he motions and down to somebody in the front row, and you don't see anybody get up or move until you see this goblin from out front climb up on the podium. Uh, you, much like Rur is not tall enough to stand out among the people here seated in their benches. But as Warble climbs up and takes the stand, uh, her hands held tightly, wrought together, very clearly still nervous, and she quickly nods and bows towards both halves of the room. Ah! Uh, esteemed counselors, it has been more than a month since I've been able to contact the Bumblebrashes. I, I fear that something terrible has befallen them. What's more, I have seen my people's distress signal coming from the top of Citadel Altarion. And at that moment in her presentation, she is interrupted by a very loud explosion. There's a second set of doors in the back of the room. From where you're sitting, it'd be to the left of where the counselors are, where they entered from, and that leads great uh, leads back into the rest of the town hall. The doors 
blast outward as a roaring fire surges up into the corner of the room, cutting her off immediately and sending the council chambers into a near instant state of panic. So, we're gonna roll some initiative, my friends. All right. Ooh, all right. We're on it. We're the best. God. So on it. God. It's, God. We're just the best. So the best. Too short. Can't see, the <laughs> Can't see what's going on. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> short, shorty makes short pants over there. Initiative is plus dexterity. Uh, uh, perception. 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 It's perception. It's yeah, also perception, perception unless there's something else. And I, I'm pretty sure that all of you are going to be rolling perception here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here is the... Let me range this a little bit here. Here is your view of the town hall. You have the counselors up top. You may put, go ahead and put your miniatures wherever it is that you would have been seated. You're not in the middle of the walkway, just wherever it oh. is you, you wanted to sit. I guess kind of you said the door's to our left, right? The door is to your left, yes. That would have exploded outward with fire. Uh, so you went, you went, so went up and sat a, across from the, because the other guys are sitting in the, the front right. The singing spirits are sitting, yeah, in that front okay, right. So right. we're like back over here. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. You said they were looking back and over at yeah, us. Yeah, so we'd be a little bit further back, yeah. Yep. So, here is fire. Wow, yeah, that's fire. Look at that. So first of all, before we continue, on the list of things we are doing new and different, with this particular campaign. We are still using a virtual tabletop because virtual tabletops are awesome. And I have grown addicted to things like dynamic lighting and well, just a whole lot of, you know, not having to deal with a folding map of any sort. But what we're doing here with this live play is a hybrid tabletop. We're still sitting on a table. We're still using these awesome miniatures, but we have this before us. And this is not Roll20, this is a different tabletop known as Arkenforge, which is built explicitly to be used at a table like this. So there's no online component, I don't have to worry about any servers going down, and I can do cool stuff like have actual fire that is on fire. So let's go down the list here and start sorting this out. Espis. 21. 21? Pretty solid. Dalren. 23. These are in no particular order. They are sorted in what they happen to be in the pile on my desk. Uh, Ruhr. Eight. Okay. Hard one. Yeah, you can't see over the bench. Can't you, uh, see. You heard you really an explosion, have. but you're not positive what's going on. Buddy. Uh, 23. 23. Well, we got some, I, I bet 21 way too high. <laughs> wow. These are some sick level one initiatives we got going on here. The champions. And these should hopefully be at least somewhat legible to you on stream now, because previously these little initiative trackers were very tiny. They're not all going to fit in frame, but such is life. Resume. Also 23. All right. Oh, well, man. I put S's way too high. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had way... The, the hard one and the 23, they kind of s- skewed this and made you think he was doing a lot better than he actually was. Who, uh, who wants to go first between Buddy and Resume? In second edition, there's no better initiative modifier or anything. It's It's... Dealer's choice. Who do you want to act first? Well, I'm pretty stuck in between uh, everybody. So I have Resme go first? Yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Move this down. Move this down. And then... I need some initiative. Because in second edition... Fire has initiative. Things are relatively straightforward, and hazards also act on initiative. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I was joking, by the way. <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently not. You were right on it. There, there it is. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Hello, fire. So immediately, as the doors fly open, the room goes into an absolute panic. Fire surges in, uh, setting the corner of the council hall on uh, aflame immediately. And this is a massive blaze that is growing through this unfortunately very wooden building that it's currently set in. There's about 60 people in this room. Oh boy. Seated together pretty closely. The, there's not a, not a lot of space 
to go around. So let me first of all go ahead and move these tokens to where you guys decide to be. So you're like hereabouts. Uh, one, one more up. Yeah, one, one more row up. up. There you okay. go. Hereabouts. Yep. Let me just grade you guys. Uh, move the movie. It's Dalran, then Buford, then Resume. Okay. Buford. And then Resume. And then. Me. Ruin the Nessus. I made your token tiny because you're tiny. Hey, thank you. <laughs> <coughs> No problem, buddy. I'm just trying to help out our local vertically challenged halfling. <laughs> <laughs> so in the immediate... Life's a bench. In the immediate chaos, there's only one exit. It's the double doors back behind you. Uh, back down here, where this walkway leads. It's only a double door. It's not particularly large. And everybody gets up and desperately tries to make their way out. 60 people definitely can't do that. And the chaos, benches are flipped, people are knocked over, this near immediately becomes a stampede. There are some lucky few. Some people manage to get out the door <clears throat> relatively quickly. Maybe 15 or 20 are able to push their way out. Everyone else is either stuck in a tumble of limbs, benches, and people, or just packed behind a wall as the two guards outside also try to get in with no idea what's happening. Lastly, it gets very slightly worse than that. Hmm. Leaping out from the uh, the double door here with the fire is a creature. A tiny flaming bat devil hmm. cackling madly with fire in his hands <laughs> as he wades through this and prepares to spread it further. And let me roll his initiative. The downside of an actual table is I have 90 books in my lap, but such is life. <laughs> <laughs> it's how things work. He has that many, plus that many, which means he is... It, oh, it makes sense. He's immediately before fire. He starts fire. It's fitting, as it should be. So, Dalren, you are the first to react here. Now, as you see all of this unfolding in front of you. There's like 40 people spread throughout the room who are either just tangled, cut up in each other, crab mentality mm -hmm. towards the door, tangle up in benches. There's children, there's elderly, there's infirm. There are a lot of people here who are not going to make it out of the door very quickly without assistance. That does not mean they are so worthless that you have to go physically pick them up and carry them <laughs> out of the door, but... You, in addition to what you could normally do with your actions, you can use actions to attempt to help some of these people leave the room. Well, that would probably be a good idea if the building was just on fire, but it seems there's an active little arsonist who's going to be running around causing more problems. There is, in fact, a tiny little arsonist that is going to be running around causing more problems. Uh, so At the moment, he doesn't he doesn't care about anyone. He is looks like he's just get ready, getting ready to set more things on fire. Yeah, so so he's probably a priority, especially given that the town council is like right next to the fire. So uh, Stalrin's gonna go ahead, especially since he's supposed to be a hero here, and that strikes him as a fairly uh, heroic type thing to go and do. Uh, Valren is going to um, uh, staff his pole, vault over the bench in front of him. Uh, to uh, land on the other side uh, and shout, uh, Counselors! Uh, to the side! And uh, then he will uh, stay 10 feet away from oh, that Oh, you have a reach weapon, right? Yeah. Uh, so given the situation, the whole area here is going to be difficult terrain, but that said, that's well within, still within your reach to strike to once. Yeah, yeah, so I can go like one, two, three, yeah, perfect. Easy. Uh, and, um, yeah, can I get on the, on the... Is that a stage? I guess that's a stage. It is, is a stage, yes, but it is about uh, two feet above the ground. It's not like yeah, it's way raised up, up in the yeah, sky. Yeah, yeah, you can just step up there with no problem. Uh, I'll do that. So and, I'll... and in fact, that area is the only place that is not difficult to ring because that is not currently full of panicked people trying to gather room. Perfect. So that's where I would like to go then. Okay. 
Uh, and once I'm there, uh, he'll ready his uh, halberd, and he's going to try to uh, trip. Uh, he's going to hook, so slide the hook along the ground and try to knock the legs out from underneath this thing. All right. So that's going to be an athletics check. Okay. And since you have a reach and a trip weapon, you can definitely knock it away. Uh, so an 8 plus a 6 is going to be a, a 14. And a 14 will succeed. So you knock this little flaming creature, whatever he is, he comes out of the door onto the ground. You just <laughs> knock him over. Um, and he's going to follow it up. Uh, he'll flip the, the thing around and just draw... Uh, actually, he'll flip it around and just draw a slashing motion upward. Uh, okay. This is how his people fight. This is how you learn how to fight. Okay, but that does... The, uh, since the trip has the attack trait, mm -hmm. that is still going to have a minus five it's on gonna it. It's going to be a minus five, but he is uh, knocked down, so he's flat-footed. He isn't back flat-footed, he's prone. So, Which uh, is, like, worse flat-footed. <laughs> so, uh, grand total to hit is going to be a 20. Can't find prone. I know he's flat footed, but I have specific. Oh, wait, I put it in the deck with dead. But I put it in the oh, quick yeah, access deck. It, yeah. The quick access deck yeah. with the dead. Because, because if you're prone, you dead. Whenever you're yeah. dead, if you're dying, you're prone. That's Plaguestone taught me to pull the dying, wounded, and prone cards into their own deck for quick reference. So, uh, what did you get, Thorin? I got a 20 total. Uh, 20 will succeed. That hits. All right. Uh, damage is going to be uh, six damage. Okay. And uh, as you cut through him, whatever this small, flaming, cackling creature is, he seems to be perfectly vulnerable to steel. Your blade slashes through him perfectly fine. And despite his small stature, he does seem to be surprisingly hardy. He's not going to go down quite that easily. So at the end of your turn there, the counselors do all immediately spring into action as well, heading to different sides of the area trying to help get as many people out as they can. And so they are working to try to clear some of the civilians. Now, there's a lot of people in here, and all the five counselors, they hear your, you call out and start working immediately. Uh, they are certainly not going to be enough, but they do start trying to shepherd the crowd out of the door. And uh, seeing the fire and the panic, much less so whatever this tiny being in battle is that's going on over here. Uh, one of them moves forward to try to just get the guards to stand back, just to clear the path so people can escape. Resme. Um, Resme uh, will call up uh, her magic and cast down uh, a triple magic missile um, at that little imp thing. She doesn't know what the heck it is, but it needs to be obliterated right now. Fair enough. And magic missile is probably the most efficient way to obliterate any level one threat. So, how much damage does this tiny being take? That is an excellent question. Uh, Eleven. Eleven damage. So, after your successful hits with your. What is it, a goose arm that you it's use? It's a goose arm, yeah. A goose arm and the three hits from the magic missile. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's 13. Okay, I forgot well, plus one. Definitely with 13 damage. If it would have done it with 11, 13 is absolutely going to do it. Whatever this tiny creature is just gets blown away immediately <laughs> by the heroes. Now, as you look across the room, uh, buddy, and you see your two elven friends immediately react and destroy whatever this threat is, you see the singing spears on the other side of the front get up, almost using their armor as bulwarks to bull their way out the door, making sure they are the first freed from harm's path uh, at the expense of many of the citizens who are now knocked down, tangled in benches, and otherwise stuck. What do you want to do? So how did the fire... What is this building made of? Did it just, like, blast through the side of it? Well, there's a door here. This is the, the uh, th that's the back entrance. Yeah, that's the back entrance where like the count that connects to the rest of the town hall. Uh, oh, okay. This is just one little wing where they hold town meetings and whatnot. Do the call for heroes. That's where like the counselors came in. The counselors weren't just like standing around outside with everyone else. They came in through this back door. This back door blasted open with a wave of fire. It caught the corner of this room on fire, and the tiny little devil creature, which died immediately, <laughs> came out. <laughs> and then what is um what is this building made of? Mostly wood. Uh, I mean, there's definitely like, like a stone foundation, but it's pretty, pretty wood. Pretty wood. Like the walls wood are benches, wood. Wood benches, wood furniture, walls are wood, floors wood paneling, podiums wood, 
pretty, this is, uh, pretty this flammable. Is, this pretty is flammable R Us, the building. Like thick wood that would take a long time to burn, or? Would a fire this size? So like a two by four kind of thick? <laughs> Maybe a craft check. Yeah, what, what is, what, what are the dimensions of the beams that um, the building is constructed The craft on? check is going to be a uh, 14. 14, I mean, it looks like it's pretty sturdy wood, but it caught fire real quick when that door blasted open, and it's clearly led by this little flame devil thing, so magic fire. Okay, so th 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 this would look like something I could bull rush a, a hole through the side of. You want to run through the side of the building? <laughs> yes. Uh, it doesn't look impossible, especially with okay. your breastplate on. <laughs> I would call to the other men. So the men are coming around. These other guys are coming around the front. Because they were in the front row probably the on the right. The singing spears are gone. Oh, they got gone. up. They, they're gone. Oh, I thought they were in the process of bolting. Okay. Yeah, <sighs> they're such. There. They you terrible heroes. Um, mm. I'm going to try and get... So everybody's kind of following to the back. I'm going to try and get a... a line that I can build up some speed. So it may actually be on the stage going to the right. Well, yeah, the right to the right, from from your perspective here, to the right and down, mostly to outside. Uh, to the left and forward it's fine. are more into the tunnel. So... Yeah. yeah. So to the right, I could just... Like, there's no door on that side, is there? there not at the moment, no. <laughs> <laughs> there's not currently a door leading up the eastern side of this building. That's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. I am going... I, I see this. I kind of set myself. I'm ready. I, you know, get my hat nice and sturdy on my head. And I'm going to, like, bull rush straight into the wall. Okay, Hopefully so clunk, 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 you get up to the stage and you just run full force <laughs> yeah. at this wall with all three of your actions yeah. as hard as possible. Yeah. Give me an athletics check. Can I assurance that? Uh, you you can assurance that. I don't know if it'd be hard um, enough. I mean, that's, it's going to take you some meat to break through a wall here. Okay, okay, okay. Let me look at my... Uh, <clears throat> Man, Assurance Athletics. Look at you. There is a DC. I'm not making it. There's a DC for this <laughs> on my GM screen for exactly what you are trying to do. You uh, are. See? This is not a crazy idea. This Apparently you're like... not that crazy, or Paizo really knows its player base. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I got a quick access table before you try to break crap that it probably is supposed to be broken. So... <laughs> Well, I don't know. I've got a pretty good assurance. Like, that's why I've got assurance. You can do an assurance. Assurance is just like a... Like, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's it's the new taking 10, more or less. So it is... You're not full force. You're kind of making Looking sure you, you hit it decently right. Yeah. So if you want assurance, you can assurance. I would like to assurance. What does that give you? A 17. Okay. So with a 17, as you slam into the wall, uh, the shoulder, the pauldron in your breastplate, crunches into the wood, denting it inward. But you don't blow through the wall to the other side. You're gonna have to hit it a little bit harder than that okay. to make an extra hole. Okay. Okay. Esvis. Uh, the first thing that Esvis is going to do is um, he's going to uh, make sure that Rur is uh, aware is, is aware of what's going on. So, <laughs> so put me up on the bench. So, uh, so uh, yeah, Esvis will. Uh, uh, Rur. We have fire ahead of us and everyone else is trying to get into a panic. See what we can try to do to either put it out or get these people out of here. And I will move yes. over to Stupid fire method. here and Esfis will use one action on each of these two civilians to try and guide them, to try and guide them like... So if you want to try to help civilians get out, what you're gonna need is more like directing traffic and controlling panic than physically actually helping somebody. Okay. So uh, you could actually do that from where you were. You don't have to move anywhere if you want. Uh, and if you use all three of your actions just trying to direct people, yell over the panic and the fire and focus your efforts on one or two people at a time, you can use three actions to just help two people that are near you get out the door without any further interference. Okay. Um... So actually, yes. If I can do that from where from from where I was, absolutely, you can. Okay, then that's what Esvis will do. He'll just immediately turn around to the two civilians and basically just uh, point to the back. Stay alongside the wall. Go, and I'll spend my three actions to get them out. And uh, 
as you move and call that out and you, you get the two of them together, you get their senses, they stop panicking and flailing, they hear this voice, they see this elf, they get up, they make their way out. The demon falls to your Gusam Strike and your uh, magic missile, but that is most certainly not the extent of the threat here. And beyond that, the fire continues to spread at a spectacularly alarming rate. So it'll go here, and it'll go here. Now those two squares are also aflame. Now just the heat from this massive fire with how close you are, Dalren, is very much dangerous. So I need you to make me a reflex save. Okay. Come on, Desert Elf Heritage. Uh, reflex save is a 13. Uh, with a 13, there's very little you can do against the wall of flame and heat here. And you're going to take five fire damage just from your proximity. Uh, it to goes this. down to four because of Desert Elf Heritage. Okay. Four, then, uh, four fire damage from this massive blaze. So yeah, Desert Elf Heritage doing Desert Elf Heritage things. Uh, if this fire spreads into you, uh, it would be severely worse. Mm. This is just from being near it. Ruhr. What kind of check would it be to see if the fire is compatible at all? Um, it's fire, but I don't like, understand what you're asking. With, with, does it look like it's getting out of hand or does it look like we can still fight it? I mean, you can definitely fight it. it it's spreading. You could certainly work to prevent it from spreading. You could, uh, I mean, it's its just fire. It's not like wizard magic unbeatable fire. It looks punch like it's, the fire. Yeah, punch the fire. <laughs> punching the fire will advise. But I mean, you if you had a way to try to fight it, you could absolutely fight it. It's, the town hall is not beyond hope. It's not condemned. Are there any, th what, what's on the walls? Uh, the walls are largely just wood panel with, with occasionally spread uh, portraits of just overviews of the town or some of the town's flammable most, tapestry perhaps. Uh, most <laughs> prominent town councillors. And soon to be and, fire. of course, two different portraits of Lamond Breachton flanking either side of the entryway. All very flammable things. None of them that yeah. are going to super help you with putting out the fire. It's hoping for um, some kind of tapestry. Make me a society check. Okay, dokie. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to think like how you can help this, make me a society check as one action. Sixteen. With a sixteen, like it's fire is not a super fantastic or rare thing. It happens, <coughs> and it is something that towns and townsfolk need to be able to deal with. And in Lua, like there's not exactly fire trucks. And Galarian. So the way, the easiest way to deal with things uh, like this is usually like a bucket brigade or a team uh, of people trying to pass buckets of water down towards the fire without uh, like a wizard or something that could transport it much easier. That's about the best you got. All right. I will spend my other two actions getting these two people in the front out of here, seeing as they appear to be in the most danger. So as a... Uh as you call out to these two, and Espes is doing the same thing next to you, uh, the two of you, if you work together to move civilians from the same area, you're much more effective. So the two of you both using all of your actions just trying to clear people, you are going to clear together six people and so instead of two of these. Nice. So you will be able to get four more civilians from around your area out of harm's way. And that brings us back to round two. Dorin. Okay, so this fire is pretty, uh, pretty oppressive, and it's it looks like it will uh, unchecked. It will quickly devour the entirety of the town hall, uh, and could possibly spread to the rest of the town. And I like this town. I live here. Uh, and they they were just about to hire me, so it would probably be pretty <laughs> good if we help this out. Um, so thinking quickly, uh, Dalren is going to um, grab his bedroll and his water skin out of his pack wrap them up and bust the water skin so that the bedroll becomes soaking wet. Okay. Uh, and then he's going to try to smother fire with that, and I'll let you decide how many actions that all takes. All right, that is, I'm going to give you one action to try to soak your bedroll there, just destroying your water skin. Bedroll's to... probably not going to be in very good condition. After bedroll's probably not going to do great after <laughs> this either. I'll definitely give you one action to try to prepare that, and then I will say for each action you spend after that, you can put out one square of fire. Okay, cool. So uh, then I will basically let you beat back 
the expansion that it has had so That far. is exactly what I'm going to do then. And to keep it at least somewhat contained up in this corner. Uh, Resume. But you are still definitely in the heat, and it's still going to continue damaging you. Yes, yes, it will. Okay, Resume. Um, Resume will say, that's a great idea. Um, and Resme will take um, out um, her water skin and her bedroll, um, and she'll come up and she'll start um, helping him. Okay, so you're gonna need you're gonna need a stride action to get up there because you're you're fairly far away from this. But moving up into the line of fire here next to Dalren. Cute. One action to get your stuff ready. One action to move over. That leaves you one action to beat back against this blaze making it just that much smaller. Uh, buddy. Well, wow, Now he that? can come and this. help us, and... Wait a minute. This Where'd he go? Wall ain't, <laughs> this wall ain't tough enough to hold up against me. Okay, this time... Because I didn't really do much last time, there's just a little bit of a dent in We're the, gonna slam real hard now. This it time is we're gonna slam jam super time. slam. Ooh, net 20! <laughs> 27! Oh, Thank you very yes, much! Oh, the best! Pulls that belt up. <laughs> I, <laughs> takes a look down at that belt buckle. Personally, I can do this. Personally insulted by yeah. the existence of, of this, this wall. wall. <laughs> <laughs> My, I, didn't, I didn't come in here to be some sissy. I'm going to take down this wall. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy stores up his armor and just... Bashes through the side of the town hall in here. Uh, bashes his way to outside. <laughs> so like, leaving a comically large sort of a Buford shaped hole With a hat. between the outer <laughs> stone reinforced wooden walls here that you smash through uh, to the bright light of day. Up. There's another exit over here. <laughs> I don't think I will. I will definitely let you go ahead and just clear out like four of these buildings. <laughs> <laughs> For the nat twenty compels you. I can't. I'm not gonna argue with the nat twenty. All right, uh, Esvis. So as this is progressing here, the counselors are still doing their best also to help you clear the room. Uh, so for the purposes of the entire map not being a grid of tokens that say civilian on it, all of the ones the counselors are dealing with are not marked. Uh, since this is much less than the 40 people that were left in here, right. and you're making a lot of progress, this vaguely represents about how many people are not being helped, still need assistance to get out of the room. Okay. Um, if Ruhr and I are going to continue to, to work together to get these civilians out from where we are, calling out to give directions, would we be able to get these last four back You here would absolutely just, be able to get these last I'll, four. I'll here. use all, all, all of my actions to be able to do that to help you know, guide them. At everyone. least clear off the side of the room where the fire is and leave the side of the room where the Buford hole is uh, for the one that we can deal with at a later occasion. So as the fire continues to spread here, uh, it grows back up. Uh, you seem to be largely keeping it in check. You're stopping it from getting much larger, but just about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it does continue to spread, I'm going to need a reflex save from Dalren and Resume. Ooh, mm. race to it now. Uh, yeah, that's a... 23. That's a 20. 20 is also a success. So, uh, Delren, you only take two fire damage, so one after your heritage. And Resme, you will only take one fire damage. So each of you are only going to take one. Solid. Just uncomfortably warm. Yeah, you, it, it's, it's hot. Yeah, I mean, you've, got, well, you've got these I've soaked, got that bed roll between yeah, you've me. Yeah, you <laughs> up here as, as giant fire shields now, so you're much more prepared for this. And uh, two... This is, I guess, the stream and also the podcast later. I'm aware there is occasional audio hitches. It is actually because uh, I'm dropping frames on the streaming PC for some reason, which is causing the little hiccups. It looks like it's below 1% of them, so it's not terrible. But there, I know there are occasional little stutters. Internet is what it is. Uh, but I do apologize. So, while you're beating this fire back, as it's just been hanging in the corner of the room, sitting here burning up, realistically, a very large blaze. It's putting out quite a lot of smoke. Ooh, 
Look at that thing. Could you put one of those over here where I can see it? Like just in the in the middle. Um, just so I could, could just move the tokens real quick and look at it. Yeah, it's just it's, but so, the, it's so far over there's a glare. The smoke is starting to fill up this corner of the room and disperse throughout the hall. Okay. And here, within another round or two, that is going to start becoming its own problem. Mm. So, uh, Ruhr, are you also going to help these last two civilians uh, yep. with Esphus here? I'll help them spend all my actions and look over at Esphus, tell him to help them with the fire. I'll go help with the rest of the civilians, and that'll just be my turn. So the counselors continue trying to clear people out of here, helping you make this side of the room, the ones closest to the fire, the ones in the most danger, get cleared out of the way. Uh, the one counselor up near the podium that Buford just ran past and just smashed through the wall, uh, the gnome is going to turn to look at you, just mouth agape. <laughs> and then you just smash through the wall and then wave a bunch of people through. And then she's just gonna help also <laughs> through the Buford hole. It's like that's that's an option. We could do that. I just call up by the gods. Sadness thinking's like magic. Uh, <laughs> Dalren. That gnome's bleaching just went back like by five. Years. <laughs> <laughs> the color fills her face and hair again. Like any danger she had of the bleaching is gone. Gone. Like, she is she's reinvigorated. You're giving her an entire second life. There's just going to be honorary emergency exits that are just going to yeah. be called buddy holes. Yeah. <laughs> Fire escapes from now on a bridge shell are known as buddy holes. That's it. Um, is that what they're called, huh? Mm -hmm. So Dalren's going to keep at this. It seems to be working pretty well. Uh, he'll shout some encouragement. Uh, we're getting it. We're getting it under control. And uh, he's going to basically spend all three of his actions just fighting this fire. So one to put out that new ember above him and another to uh, just try to just go pat down this giant thing in front of me to get it down to something manageable. And you do manage to beat it down a significant amount in uh, Resme. Um, Resme will go, yes, yes, we're doing it. Let's let's finish this. And go in and uh, try to douse the rest of the fire um, with her blanket. And that is something that at this point, you could certainly do. Uh, beating the fire back into the doorway and largely clearing it from the whole room in general. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> as you can see, uh, as you gain the ability rather to see through the doorway, to see where the fire had come from, you can see that there's not much. The room behind it is not fully aflame or anything. And as you push through this with your soaked bedrolls, the fire is beaten down to almost nothing just immediately behind the doorway. Hmm. All that it looks like is that a small pile of uh, books, scrolls, and scrap cushions and furnishings had been piled here to be a start before that devil creature blasted the fire and threw the door open. So, not only have you put out the fire almost entirely here in the room, you have brought it down nearly to nothing. <laughs> I don't think somebody wanted this meeting... <laughs> To take place. <laughs> Buddy. Ah. Uh, well, we don't know if any more of those demon creatures are going to come around here, so we'd, we'd better get the rest of the people out. You can't counselors. You start heading towards the doors, yeah? So you want to use three? Yeah. You want to use your actions to just continue waving people out the buddy hole? Yeah. And so now, the, now there's a good split. One half of the room is largely cleared, and the other half of the room has two exits, one on either side. So this is much easier for you to keep under control, especially with the attention of all of the counselors on this end. Uh, it's it's very almost straightforward at this point. And I think by now, with the fire largely gone and the uh, the moment of panic largely passed, I don't think we super need to be an initiative anymore. Well done. Oh, well <laughs> done, all of you. Well done. Spectacular. Look at you thinking like getting people out. Mm -hmm. What Look a weird this. concept. Look at this. <laughs> Trying to like talk with people. Weird. Why talk when you can use your body? Yeah, why talk when you just make so another all exit? That's, all that's left to do now is deal with the, the vestiges of it. Get the last few people safely out through one of the new two doors and to tamp out what's left of the embers and the, the small <clears throat> fire left in the other room and, and as you get there you realize it's not even really big enough to spread out and become a threat anymore even if you weren't able to put it out entirely 
So the smoke spreading throughout the room never really has an opportunity to get any thicker, to get any worse. And then a few more minutes, the group of you, along with all of the townsfolk and the counselors, are just gathering back outside in the front of the town hall's meeting chamber, largely just as you had before. Uh, but this time, everyone, like panicked parents searching, making sure their children are okay, uh, embraces all around as everyone has escaped the, the harrowing event, realistically, in the lives of your average backcountry town folk. It's not very often that Call for Heroes just explodes into flames. <laughs> not a very common thing. That was so Do- strange. Where did that little thing come from? Where are those stupid singing spears just run off right through the crowd? They, they're good for nothing, I what say. What heroes they are. Yeah, exactly. They likely didn't endear themselves to their new paymasters. But as you, uh... As you look through the crowd and look over this, one of the counselors, the woman who was responsible for handing out the contract to the Singing Spears, who, by the way, are nowhere to be seen, uh, they ran clear and gone. Uh, She looks around the group, uh, around at everyone, and after checking and making sure that everybody is fine, calls out over the crowd, What manner of madness just happened? This can be no accident. Did anyone see anything? Well, uh, yes, uh, I, I saw something. <clears throat> uh, yes, and, uh, I saw it too. Fire from that storeroom, um, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't a natural fire. Uh, a creature, uh, some small looking imp uh, that seemed to be able to control it, came in afterwards, uh, intent on mischief. And uh, one of the guards that was outside from the door that, after they'd been yelled to, moved out and just started also helping people get out and directing traffic a bit kind of raises his hand like he's in school <laughs> for a moment uh, before the woman turns and motions to him. I! <coughs> the, the clerk saw everything from the other room. It was Kalmon, that cat of a bookseller's apprentice. He lit the fire in the halls next to the chamber, and he'd set that fire monster loose on the crowd. And the other guard... Wait, wait, wait. So you're telling me that an a- apprentice came along and, and summoned this little demon? Did and, he have it in a cage? Or uh, the other on a leash? The other guard, uh, a fairly tall woman, nods and says, Indeed! Uh, and witnesses outside the building saw him running up towards Hell Knight Hill. He conjured the thing out of some piece of paper, a, a small scrap, a wound scroll. Hmm. What, what witnesses? Uh, I mean, you're around the like, Center are there people town, corroborating? Right? Yeah, I mean, there there are people just, like, around that weren't in the Call for Heroes that were still around, like, just huh. doing their daily business, as well as people from the adjacent uh, clerk's offices and whatnot, where the fire had been started in the first place. And, uh... Perhaps the denizens of uh, Hell Knight Hill don't want us investigating. And a kind of surprised series of uh, mutters and gasps goes through the crowd here. Uh, but you hear over the top of that little goblin warble call out, the Citadel! My bubble brushes! And the council leader steps up and raises a hand and just kind of motions for everyone to calm themselves for a moment. And he stands up as tall and straight as he can before speaking out. Friends, we'll get to the bottom of this, but we can't do it alone. And he starts looking out through the crowd and noticing the five of you here. The, the, the heroes that were in attendance today, are you willing to investigate Hell Knight Hill? Of course. Absolutely. Certainly, yes. That's quite reasonable. Uh, we will find this arsonist. I believe this has suddenly become a very pressing issue for the town at all, not just Miss Warble and her bumble brashes. Oh, yeah. But, uh, I will... And he looks out. Miss Warble! Where were you? And you see a tiny green hand kind of in the back of the crowd bouncing forward towards them through the crowd as she pushes her way past people to get up close. Uh, Miss Wobble, if you could fill these heroes here on the details, uh, we'll arrange... Uh, give us a moment. Uh, let us ensure that everyone is all right, that this is all under control, and there's no further traps or vandalism planned by this Calmont. Uh, we'll be right with you, heroes, and thank you. Do not think your deeds today have gone unnoticed. 
You be sure to tell those singing spears that they come back around here. You better be sure to tell them that they did not appreciate and I do not approve of the way they just ran folk over. And uh, at this point, they would slowly be making their way, the, the singing spears, back up towards the group, slowly kind of approaching, realizing there's no danger. And what? then just Absolute kind of ninnies. striding in. Yeah, we'd survived. <laughs> As they come up, the, yeah. uh, the leader. Uh, Sig, Real impressive. Uh, Sig Jones, the leader, moves up and motions towards uh, Counselor Gardania. Uh, I believe we were supposed to be meeting with you for contracts and payments, and she just looks at them and looks back at you five and motions you to come in and just <laughs> go away. <laughs> so, the, uh, when you come closer, I can't begin to express our gratitude for what you've done here today. Uh, we saw not only did you, the group of you douse the fire, defeat that demon, whatever that thing was directly, <laughs> you, in your own ways, risked life and limb for the people of this town. I wish to reward you how I can. Uh, Citadel Altarian has been vacated for decades now and other than the bumble brashers it's largely wilderness populated by whatever roving creatures and monsters the wildlands have uh, of the wildlands that have sought shelter inside its crumbling walls and she reaches back uh, into a knapsack on her belt under a cloak and pulls out uh, four bottles and hands them out to whoever's closest and she gives you two Minor healing potions, a lesser antidote, and a lesser anti-plague to assist you on your journey. Thank you, that's so generous. In addition, from her own purse, she pays each of you 50 silver. Wow. Each of us 50 Each wow. of you 50 silver. Wow. You for getting paid today. Are you sure? Yes, of course she's sure. <laughs> uh, I am I indeed. I on that. Uh, ah. Not anymore. It, it's far less than what you deserve of, uh, of what you deserve for these valorous acts today. But still, let me let me add on an, another contract from the council here. Uh, something that uh, another avenue of investigation. The initial task from Miss Warble was to investigate her bumblebrashers up on Hell Knight Hill. Uh, that contract still stands, and the council has decided to dedicate ten gold pieces uh, for discovering what has become of her goblin tribe. Additionally, and I will deal with the council president myself, I'm sure he will agree that this is a good use of our funding, a further ten gold for tracking down this Kalmont and bringing him back alive. We need to know... Why? This random act of violence, these, these are always caused by something. And with this, if we don't know his motivations or the extent of his machinations, the town is no safer with him alive than dead. But thank you, sincerely. Mm. I personally am glad that the contracts have shaken out the way they have. I will admit that you didn't present yourselves quite as well as the singing spears at the, in the town hall, but your performance speaks volumes for itself. Well, thank you, Councilman. It uh, seems to have uh, been uh, fate itself that brought us there. And I hope that fate itself continues to watch over you. Be careful. I don't know what would have caused Miss Warble to lose contract, contact with her goblin tribe. She takes her job very seriously. So I worry it's something severe. Uh, perhaps the goblin saw something shiny somewhere else and decided to chase it. Mm. That part, uh, Warble. At elbow. Was just kind of around. <laughs> elbow down right Sort of around. Warble speaks up. Well, uh, possibly, but Chieftain Helbert takes his duties very seriously. I. Uh, it would have to have been something exceptionally shiny. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Warble, uh, it's so nice to see you again. Uh, nice to see friendly faces as well. Thank you. And she uh, looks at her hand for a second, 
thinks and then reaches up to shake yours. I'll uh, I'll shake it and uh, I'll say to her uh, in Goblin, um, my uh, my family uh, bids you uh, hello. Um, it's been a while uh, since I've heard from the Bramble Brashers. I was worried myself. And she uh, looks almost kind of taken aback. Wow. That's uh, and still in common. And then stops for a moment and replies in, in Goblin much more eloquently. You cannot imagine the weight lifted from my shoulders, my offer of assistance. I have been petrified of thinking about what may have happened here. And then switches back to common for the rest of the group. I, I can give you the details, but we noticed this, this, this smoke rising from the, 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 the ramparts, the, the battlements of Citadel Altarian. And that's been the Bumble Brasher's distress signal. Uh, it appeared a day or two ago. And I hadn't heard from them for a month before that. If you're ready, I would, I would much appreciate that we depart as soon as possible. Of course. Will you be coming with us? Well, of course. I can guide the wilds. I can give you what information there is. I'm the closest contact that the Bumblebrashes have with town. <clears throat> ah. Oh. So I see no reason not to go now. I won't. What about the rest of you? I well, won't head in. Uh, I, 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 I'm not a fight fighter. I, I don't know what I can could help you with with whatever may have caused them to disappear, but but I can handle myself and survive in, in, in the wilderness perfectly fine. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, yes, no, we, we can we can go now. I would need to stop by uh, uh, General Supply. I uh, see appear to uh, need a new bedroll and water in, skin. Indeed, that does appear to be the case. And you could, uh, you could easily uh, agree to meet her up on the road leading north out of town. And after you've replaced the small supplies mm. that you had lost in this initial battle here, your bedroll and your water skin. Uh, there is a general store in town, quarters and bits, run by a nice little, very business-minded halfling who would very easily take your money in exchange for the things that you require. <laughs> in fact, Fabulous. he loves doing that more than most other things in life. But uh, Also, I'd like to sit down with you for a few minutes after noticing bit of the scorch marks across your front your forearms and your your legs yeah maybe you need those attended to a little bit uh yes actually they're they're stinging quite a bit that'd be very helpful so <laughs> we'll take a quick little 10 minute break to try and heal those up with a 18 and uh, yeah an with 18. an 18 you could absolutely uh, restore 2d8 health to dull red you can quickly tend to his minor... Plus five. Oh, That's not, actually exactly what I need. Not super. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. You took four and then one. Easy. Mm-hmm. So you uh, you take some time to treat him. You stop by quarters and bits. Uh, restock your bedroll and your water skin. That's easy enough. Those are incredibly simple items. Uh, are there any of the preparations anyone wants to make in town specifically before heading up, heading up to meet with Warble? I don't think so. Well, they're yeah. shopping, uh, just going around making sure all the people who were in the building Dollar are in, that okay. was very quick thinking. Nothing special. Oh, uh, thank you. I'd probably mosey up to Crink and well, I don't know if you've heard now, but I'm I'm now a designated hero and, you know, I just thought, you know, <clears throat> pat my breastplate like, see anything wrong with this? Because, you know, I'm going you know, out doing hero stuff. And, uh, so are you, you and Crink, you familiar with each I have, other? I have tried to get Crink to teach me, how, to, but I don't have enough money for him to be interested normally. But now I'm a hero and I matter. So he normally just kind of <laughs> shoots me To teach along. you to run a store? Like no, what? to teach me how to m make armor. Oh, that's not really his. He runs Quarters and Bits, which is, uh, it has a smith and it sells armor and weapons out of that. It's like a forge and blacksmith on one side and a shop on the other. He owns and runs the places, but he's not actually like the smith. But it doesn't say anything about a smith, so armor. I just The assume. smith is one of, uh, is another goblin. A small little dingus by the name of Clackett who takes his business and his uh, life very, very seriously. Uh, and he's the one who actually works the armor. So if you wanted to learn smithing, Clackett is who you'd need to get I in with I would here. then try and smooth be like, <clears throat> so Clackett, you know, uh, <clears throat> I'm here now. Why don't you just roll me a d20? <laughs> just, just Isn't there a thing for make, making friends? It's Diplomacy. a downtime activity that you can't do in five uh, seconds. Oh, okay. Uh, I have 11. Okay. So yeah, you've, uh, you've, 
tried to get Clack at the teaching before. Clack gets very busy, very dedicated to his job, and doesn't really do anything off the books that uh, Crank the Halfling hasn't already approved. So See, that's he, uh, why I was going after Crank. Yeah, he. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you come in there, and Clack. It looks up. I. You're a hero now. Sure I am. One of the best darn heroes around. You know, I'm. I've done save the whole town hall this morning. Uh, this he's a he's got a, a little dagger that he's just kind of looking over and uh, looking through a little fault near the blade, trying to figure out how he can fix or repair it. I said, "Did you? Uh, you were in town hall. You went to I the council's call. Personally, saved Councillor Burton's uh, whole family, all the people there, <laughs> everyone, all the other heroes. They've been, done been saved because I blew a hole right through." That wall. <laughs> and he, uh, <laughs> he kind of looks up at you. Make me a deception check. <laughs> what? That's so true. <laughs> That's partially true. There is you some elements of truth. truth. There are <laughs> elements. <laughs> there are elements of truth in what you said. Uh, I got a accurate. good old five right there. <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate. That's like it kind of looks up at you. That's not the liar on the Inquisitor. <laughs> <laughs> that up. Uh, Sounds word uh, for lie, but nicer. <laughs> lie? Unrealistic. That sounds unrealistic. unrealistic. Do you have Man. a contract from Crank? Have you paid him? I was talking to him earlier, and he, he shooed me on in here, so I assumed you were the man I was supposed to talk to. He hasn't told me anything. Let me see the paper. Well, he didn't give me no paper. Then he just turns around from you. And <laughs> <laughs> And facing the other direction, he just says, And the same as every day, and every week, and every month, and every year. I do work when Crank has work. I'll, I'll, I'll be around. I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> You're so good at this. <laughs> so, you, uh, eventually the group of you make your way up towards the road the leading north through the city's walls. And you know your goal is Citadel Altarian, Hell Knight Hill, as it's called. It's very visible from town. It's not exactly hidden. It's about a mile through the woods north, up on a fairly high bluff. An enormous citadel, abandoned by the Hell Knights for which the hill was named some decades ago when they moved off to go... Do Hell Knight things elsewhere. It's never entirely clear why exactly they had come to Breach Hill in the first place. It's sort of out of the way. It doesn't have any real major connections, but nobody's really going to question the Order of the Nail when they come into town and say they're building a citadel with their teams of workers and their artisans and their carpenters and their masons and their chests and their, of money and their buckets <laughs> of gold nobody's really going to say no but ever since they abandoned it it's just kind of been there always visible on the horizon just sort of looming now while it's a mile uh, around a mile a little further uh, north by northeast away out of the town the journey there on foot is significantly longer. It's up on a relatively high bluff. Like I said, Breach Hill's in the foothills of the Five Kings Mountains, one of the biggest mountain ranges in the Intersea region. And the path that winds up around behind this and comes back up to Citadel Altarian is nearly a 10 mile journey. Unless you want to climb a cliff face up to the front of the Citadel and Hell Knight Hill itself. Assuming that that's probably not what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. The group of you meet up with Warble near the north end of town. She's still just kind of rubbing and wringing her hands and terribly worried, but when she sees the group of you appear, she brightens up a bit and smiles, but doesn't loosen up. So, I... Well, first of all, I thank you on behalf of the Bumblebrasher tribe of goblins, and uh, they will thank you as well, I'm, I'm sure, once we find their Helba. Uh, I... The, the council lady, the, uh, the, the nice one with the robes and the, uh, the hat, uh, she told me that I, I, I had details to give you, but I, I, I don't really know what there is to share, necessarily. 
Um, well, but I if guess, you have questions, I can, I can. Well, if you haven't really been in contact with uh, the the Bimble Bushers for about a month, Bumble now. Brashers. It's Bumble Brashers. Bumble Brashers. Bumble, Bumble Brashers. Brashers. I thought that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, if you haven't been in contact with them for at least a month, um, maybe you can tell us a bit about the castle and the foothills themselves. What we can expect in the areas on the way up. Well, the the Bumble Brasher tribe, my 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 people, uh, have made their living in that castle ever since. Well, the builders just kind of left it there and abandoned the place. It's a bit run down now, but that just kind of, I, I suppose, makes it a little easier to get around. The walls are still mostly sturdy, and the doors all still work, and it's it's got a roof, so it's it's better than the woods. We've we've always sort of shared the place uh, with. Well, all sorts, really. Uh, sometimes other tribes, sometimes wandering creatures that were either too big, too angry, or, or too toothy for us to run off properly. Uh, but they all come and go. But that's normal. Nothing, we never really bother them, and they never really bother us. Uh, truth be told, we mostly live in the basements. The, the bumble brushers usually don't even come up to the surface that much. Uh, they live in the, the, the vaults underneath the Citadel. So, I don't know what would have happened that could have driven them out or uh, I, I mean they they're sending the smoke signals so they must they must still be there hmm. but they've missed we usually meet with them every every two weeks or so I'll, I'll meet with helba make contact figure out what's going on I, I i have to know i have to keep up on the work of our tribes because i'm the ambassador uh and i take my job and she stands up very straight very seriously mm. it's important you know is it possible something moved the into war. the catacombs? Forced them up to the top and now they can't get out? And she just uh, kind of shrugs. I don't know how that would be possible. Uh, there, there's nothing that could have... There, there's no coming up. It's the there, There's the keep and then there's the basement. So if it was something dangerous or something mean or angry or toothy, it would have come down the stairs and they would be trapped in the basements. They would, I imagine, be able to send smoke signals. Hmm. And even beyond that, if they could escape, certainly they would have came and made contact with us. I just don't understand what could have happened. Well, I guess there's nothing for it then than to go find out ourselves. And she uh, just nods very rapidly a few times. Of course! So, if you're ready, we can. I, I can guide us. I can help set up camp. I can tend to... Do you, do you, do you have... And she kind of just makes a motion with legs. her hand, like horses? walking, but with more legs. The the toll beasts. Those horses? Them horses. Well, those are real expensive around here. I, uh, I have a horse. You do? Well, yes. You some kind of royalty? <laughs> N- no, but she's been mine since I was a... Well, she was a gift from my mother. She, like, ancient or something? Because, like, horses only live for so long. Maybe you're thinking of some other kind of animal. No, she's she's a horse. Well, <laughs> regardless, I don't think we've brought any horses with us. Well, this works out okay, because historically, goblins don't get along great with horses. Uh, mm, so that's true enough. This works. We won't share, we won't scare the bumble brashers off if they, well, if they, if they I hope, are, are still there. Yes, goblins don't tend to get along well historically with many creatures. Yes, unfortunately. Which is why my job as ambassador is so important. Because not all goblins are crazy murder fire stab goblins. It seems to have fallen out of favor recently. And she just kind of scratches up at her neck nervously. Yes. Um, right. So, are, are, we, are we ready? Yes. Absolutely. I, I... I'd be interested to see what Esvis thinks about this place. You know, he's he's been around everywhere, and he knows everything about everything ever. I've never seen a man who knows so much stuff about the surrounding area. So. Uh, well, it's true. We didn't get too much chance to talk before you know, all the commotion back at the town hall. Please, uh, tell, tell us of your expertise and your experience. Perhaps we should stay focused on the need of the goblins rather than trying to bring up old, hateful stereotypes. But their need is your know-how. Like, you are the most know-how man I've ever met. And the ambassador has offered to guide us there. I will take her up on her expertise. So you never been there? Is that what you're saying? If you don't know, I know you're embarrassed about not knowing things. So if you don't know, that's okay, too. 
Yeah, it's okay. He's shy sometimes. Uh, I sense there's... Oh, I'll just leave it, I guess. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Esphus just has a flat expression on his face the entire conversation. Just, me and Esphus go way back. He's <laughs> real good. <laughs> just an actual board, just staring. But he eats lemons to practice. <laughs> the group... <laughs> With that, uh, the group of you That's why he's so sour. with Warble <laughs> make your way out of Breach Hill and up towards Hell Knight Hill, towards Citadel Altarian, uh, while Warble very excitedly fills the void, all of it, 100% of the void, with explaining the history of her tribes and her people and goblins and... Every every second there is. Resme is actually really really interested and will uh, actually converse with her in Goblin if she doesn't understand something or if she wants to get a to more specific her, yeah, okay, detail. To help her, help her kind of get things exactly. Out, she's not super great with comments. Yeah, she'll actually kind of translate to try to make them understand that you know this is not her normal language and that she's actually quite articulate in her tongue. So as you journey, as you explore, you could say. Uh, one of the big things about Pathfinder 2nd Edition that is kind of a large departure from 1st Edition is this exploration mode. Uh, of course, there has always been roll initiative, we're in combat, things move round by round every six seconds and you have fixed numbers of actions. But everything outside of that has always just been largely... It's there, and you there's, there's not a ton of rules, really, for anything on a grander scale than six-second turns. Now... Uh, just general exploration, whether it's through the countryside, whether it's through a journey, or whether it's through, uh, like, a massive subterranean crypt, falls under the banner of this exploration mode. Which means, really, it just streamlines a lot of things. It streamlines a lot of gameplay. It stops a lot of, we walk into a room, five people roll nine perception checks, and then detect magic 17 <laughs> times. It, uh, it, it prevents that by just giving everyone kind of a task, like a thing that you are working on as you go. So as you make your way up to Citadel Altarian, it's mostly along, well, it's first almost entirely along just the, the main travel road up north. We don't really expect it. It's a well-traveled path. It's generally fairly safe. They did talk about the uh, the other contract, of course, was bandit issues, but that was sounded like it was much further outside of town than you're going. Uh, and then it will turn into a path, a footpath, just winding back up the backside of that bluff towards the citadel itself. So what are you all doing as you explore? If you wish to just get there quickly, because it is the afternoon, the Call for Heroes wasn't until the sun was at its, at its peak, uh, you can just, what is called, hustle, which is just you go fast, and you forego perception checks, trying to sneak, any of that stuff to just get somewhere quickly. So it's not a terrible idea to just hustle, but of course that only works if literally everyone wants to do it. So does anyone want to do anything else? Warble very much wants to get there quickly uh, because she is terribly concerned about her goblins. If she isn't like concerned about the whereabouts or anything and she knows exactly where she's going. Yeah, we're she hustling. have no real concerns we're, we're walking on the road. We're booking it. So all of you, Hustle upwards towards Citadel Altarian on a, on a fairly long journey. Uh, you're not going to be able to hustle the entire way, of course, but you will be able to hustle most of the path up this major road before it forks off into the foothills and the trees and winds its way up the hill. So it won't be until fairly late in the afternoon, even with that, that you finally start to come up the backside here. And as you start to break from the trees, you can see rising up from the hill in front of you this massive structure. Almost certainly this would be the first time that any of you had been anywhere near the place. Though, of course, for the whole time you've been in Breach Hill, it's always been visible up on the bluff. It's just existing. It's never really mattered. Mm. It's just there. It's a neat piece of, piece of history, which may be noteworthy to like the nerdy sorts here in the group but even then it's not that exciting it's hell they, there was a castle hell knights built it hell knights left well it's and particularly would... interesting to me it was the main reason i'm in town if i remember right well 
still, I don't imagine you would have actually come here. Just no. because just a bunch of reading about it. Yeah, you have a goblin ambassador with Warble, but she's not representative of the average bubble brusher. So, <laughs> which is something you don't be very much aware of. Mm -hmm. So you probably would, it's not like you'd want to walk up to this detached goblin tribe just out of nowhere and make contact with no idea of what else is up here. I mean, Espis and uh, Buford, you know full well what kind of dangerous just animals there could be up in the forest around here. So it would be certainly the first time you've seen it up close. Still a massive looming stone structure, but the exterior very visibly weathered and crumbling. Now, as you wind around on this bluff, you end up coming at it from the east here, and you can see bits and pieces where some of the wall has actually started to crumble and collapse away. Uh, teeth of the battlements having fallen entirely off onto the ground or just sagging back onto the, uh, onto the landing behind them. And verdant growths coming up from the wilds already starting to reclaim this ancient structure. Also very visible from this close are the plumes of red smoke rising up from the battlements of the structure itself. Now clear as actual day. This, this is Citadel Altarian, <laughs> the ancient order of the Nail Fortress. And as you approach, you can see something else of interest. The massive gate-like doors to the front of this structure are hung slightly ajar, <laughs> not even fully closed. Now, the whole building is ringed with arrow slits, and various other defensible structures, so it's in no way difficult to, like, see into the building from anywhere. But, I figure, oh. as we approach the main gates here, it's the perfect time to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're so close. <laughs> you are so close. It has been a couple of hours. We're going to take our midstream break here, everybody. That's <laughs> stream. Because we got to pee. <laughs> <laughs> Did he? <sighs> yes. I'm going to take our midstream break. Now dejectedly. Uh, <laughs> before returning to begin our investigations into what could possibly have happened to these bumble brushers. Figure out how we want to approach this citadel and see what lurks behind these massive gated doors. Something's been through here. Clearly, it's not entirely closed. But it could be. No. I don't know. So maybe someone, maybe something came and just decided to leave. Yeah. Just real simple. particularly interesting. Yeah. 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 Easy, easy. Quick. In and out. 10 minute adventure. Easy. Be fine. Be right back.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Perfect. All right, I had to make sure my sound and everything was okay. I had to do a double check in there. Because I don't, I, I'm not yet comfortable enough with the setup that I trust all of the sound stuff to have worked correctly. Mm. But it appears that it has, through some uh, actual just witch magic, no technology has completely broken yet. The only problem we've had so far is this occasional hitching, which I actually, based on how like weirdly consistent it is, don't. I think it's more of a CPU thing. I'll address it. Hopefully I can fix the random like sound hitches and stuff for next week. But we're doing, in the grand scheme of things, for how new this entire setup is, us coming over from fully just roll 20 to a complete full table setup with a totally different VTT and, you know, all new equipment and mics and cameras, I will take occasional audio hitching. <laughs> I will take that as the technical flaw that we have the technical flaw of the night. in our in our start here. So, we had arrived outside Citadel Altarian at, on Hell Knight Hill, uh, where Warble had led us up to begin this investigation. Now, at this point, it is starting to get late. Uh, the journey here was relatively long, and taking it on foot up the road was quick enough, but up through the winding paths back up the bluff was not terribly quick. Uh, the sun will probably set in about an hour. It's fairly late in the afternoon. And uh, Warble peeps up. As this, it should be simple enough to find a little hill or clearing around here to uh, set up a camp for the night. Sure. Let's make camp. I, I want to... I want this to be dealt with quickly, but I, it, there's one thing I've learned from the, the wilderness and, well, you know, the, the everything that, that comes along with that. It's that the toothy and the angry things get much more toothy and angry when the sun goes down. And I don't want this to be more of a problem. So would you recommend then we shelter out in the woods or try to uh, enter the castle and find a side room? Oh, oh no, no, oh no, 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 I'm definitely, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going in the, the Citadel. No, not, not yet. I, we don't know what's in there. Uh, if, if you, if you're confident, if you're up to it, I, then she just kind of vaguely gestures towards the gates. <laughs> mm, I would much rather make camp and approach it in the daylight. It's probably safer. What do you think, Isvis? Probably a good idea. I don't understand what's happening, but we can still see the signal smoke, so they're alive, at least. Lots of things can make smoke. I worry. But this looks like a special smoke. And, and she looks up, and it is like, it's plumes of red smoke just occasionally coming up from the battlements. Hmm. And she says, well, that, that, there's a powder that we use. We, 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 oh. we grind up from these, these, these tree... She just kind of makes like a clamping motion with her hands. Tree, tree squishy grow growths. And uh, that's very clever. It burns like that, that, that visible red. So, well, so that the rest of the bumble brushers can come to aid, or worst, I can see it. And I don't know. But there, I, I, that's them, I'm certain. Okay. Then let's find a place to make camp. So she turns around and totters off back in the trees a little way. And up here on this bluff, it's really no difficulty to find a, a fairly safe or defensible hillock where you can see a ways around you and largely ensure that nothing terrible is going to happen in the night. And uh, Warble, oddly dressed and attemptedly formal as she is, is definitely still a goblin. And though she didn't bring very much with her on this journey, she doesn't seem to need it. As she is perfectly happy to just find a particularly soft patch of dirt and just rest there. She is no less survivable in the woods than any other goblin. She's just slightly more civilized the rest of the time. Um, I'll uh, pitch a tent and uh, make a a campfire uh, for us to have some dinner. All right. And what about the uh, what about the rest of you? What is everyone uh, doing to set up your your camp here to prepare? You've all got, but well, you have new bedrolls. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you've got uh, tents and bedrolls and whatnot, or is it a patch of dirt? Uh, just 
standard bedroll pillow, go to sleep somewhere. I'll, Find I'll, grab I like the band of the stars. I have, I have a pup tent. I, I like not being out under the stars. <laughs> Outside is dumb, tent. <laughs> <laughs> um, Esfus will set up a bedroll, but before he will actually, uh, if possible, do a, a tracking trail around the campsite, just as like, is there something, uh, like what types of animals may be around in this area that we may need to be concerned about, or just so that we're not snuck up on them in the okay. middle of the night. Okay, uh, roll me a survival check. Okay. Uh, 11. 11. A total of 20. Okay, so with a 20, it's not so much animals that are the huge concern around Breach Hill. I mean, there is, the, again, the occasional just bear or boar. And up here in these, uh, these foothills and the little mountains, sometimes there's cougars. But there's not a ton uh, beyond that for super dangerous normal fauna. The problem and the reason that Isker was so hit and so damaged, and even Breach Hill specifically, was so uh, damaged by the Goblin Blood Wars uh, some years ago is because there is a lot of goblinoid races up in Northeast Easier where we are. And that's not just goblins. That's bugbears. That's like the, the strange goblin dogs. There are a wide variety. There's almost like a whole separate ecosystem of goblinoid creatures. All of them relatively common around here. So your main concerns, I would say, would be like uh, of what is an actually like really dangerous threat to five armed adventures, bugbears. Okay, most likely. <clears throat> we'll have to set up a watch. Uh, I suppose um, while they're all doing that, I'll just help Buford build the fire. I can also get uh, if it's all right as a part of that survival check. Would it be too much to ask for maybe if I can catch like small game just to bring back for food or? Oh, uh, that would be a different survival check, but you definitely could. Subsisting. Yeah, that's a that's a survival check to subsist. That's like that is a. Like and one if of the you just, have forager, you can subsist well, like have yep. good meals. It's one of the just defined things you can do oh, okay. with uh, with a survival check. However, I believe that actually takes a really long time. It it's, takes like uh, eight hours to properly okay, go so down and hunt down game to be able to feed people. Okay, uh, um, and that actually just feeds you. So you normally need a water skin and you need rations to survive out in the wild. But if you can make the survival it. check to forage, you can provide for yourself without trail rations. Four people. Four people without trail rations. And forage lets you provide for more people than that. So hunting is not something you can, you can't really quickly be here for an hour and <laughs> okay, then ha I'll... happen in the game without getting super lucky. I mean, you can roll. Like if you could succeed, I'll give it to you. But uh, Espis will just do the patrol then. That's just a big to ass rabbit. Just <laughs> <laughs> Goblin rabbit. <laughs> it's a grab it. Grab it now. That looks like a cow you took from a farm nearby. <laughs> it's got rabbit ears on it. It's fine. You're just a thief. He's <laughs> just a cow and he just put like one of those little rabbit ear yep. yeah. okay. head pieces yeah. on it. It's elven diplomacy to get it. <laughs> uh -huh. So Esfus will just do the patrol then. So as you uh, you all settle down for the evening, uh, Warble, I, what? I would ask Rur, I'd be like, what? So I don't want to be offensive or anything, but what kind of name is Rur? Did you like, did your, it sounds like a sight hound that's trying to bark while it has a toy in its mouth or something. Like, I don't understand. What were your parents thinking? I'm not, you know, I don't want to offend or nothing, but. You know, that is a very good question that I don't have the answer to. Huh. I was left Did your parents the, have any dogs? Not that I'm aware of. I was left at. A church of Sarenray as a child. I oh, now don't I exactly feel bad. know them. It's, it's really no should. big deal. That was oh, pretty God, terrible. That now I feel awful. I wouldn't know where the name came from. It was given to me by someone at the church. And are you like legal to be out here on your own, or is this... <laughs> just because I look young doesn't mean I am? Well, I can see you, you haven't even grown any hair yet, or anything like <laughs> is that. Is that I just keep it well trimmed. Ah. Okay, good. Well, I just make sure we're all level on the same page around here. Oh my god. You have to keep up the boyish charms. Beaver's concerned about the weird, tiny, <clears throat> hairless baby. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to protect this? <laughs> <laughs> Get in my backpack, tiny baby. We'll keep you safe. It's like, first, tiny baby can perfectly take care of themselves. And second, yes, you have to protect it. Yeah. Yep. So Very much so. Uh, Warble, goblin that she is, is. Honestly, just as at home here in the woods and the fields as she is in an actual building. 
civilized as she tries to be, she's never really wholly adapted out of being a goblin. So she is fully content to take watch for the evening uh, as survival out here would imply uh, she's lived long enough to know that that's just something you don't really skip. That's not something you skimp on. Uh, she, she'd take first watch to let you all rest uh, and get as rest as you can for whatever is going to happen tomorrow. But as the watch rotates uh, through everyone as the night passes and the sun rises the next day, you would all, I assume, be ready and prepared mm -hmm. to figure out what has happened with the bubble brushes. So, we have a map. Oh, boy. Because of course we have a map. Because imagine not having a map for a giant freaking citadel on a hill. Hey, come on. Do you, do you, what kind of game do you think we're playing what here? What kind of game indeed. <laughs> One can only hope this map leads to redemption. So you said these doors were like a jar. Were they like hanging off hinges or they're no, scratch they marks? No, they are slightly or? ajar. Uh, as you once again approach the front of the citadel here, ajar is the, 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 the word there. Uh, they're very thick, heavy, reinforced wooden and iron banded doors uh, meant to be a gate, a defensible gate. Is Obviously, this is a castle. Mm -hmm. This is a fortress. That um, doesn't sound like a jar. But they, but they are pretty severely <laughs> battered. Uh, mostly, it seems, by the elements, just again, because it's been abandoned for a mm -hmm. few decades here. Um, above the door frame, there is a weathered and tarnished seal, depicting a sunburst made of nails standing out in relief against the keep's stone. And underneath that seal is a pretty worn but clear line of text. Does anybody speak Infernal? Yeah, yeah. Negative Ghost Rider. And there is a line of text that would be in what any of you could probably recognize as Devil Script. But none of you know what it says. Would the symbol be recognizable? <clears throat> uh, the symbol would certainly be recognizable with a society check. I'll give it a shot, see if I can figure out what this might be. <clears throat> with a 16. 16, you would recognize that here in Isker in a colony of Cheliacs as the insignia of the Order of the Nail. Uh, one of the more prominent factions of Hell Knights. Okay. Now, as we begin to explore the Citadel properly here, uh, we are going to use exploration mode, but for serious this time. So uh, as you guys are making your way into and throughout Citadel Altarian, what is it that you are doing, Ruhr? Recalling knowledge. So you will be doing the society checks and knowledge, investigating, looking around, seeing what you can mm -hmm. learn about the place. Esfus? Um, um, and... Do you need options? Because I know you're you're the one that's super new to second edition. <laughs> I would also like options because so, there's actually quite a few. <laughs> so there are a lot of there are a lot of unfortunately also in the back of my GM screen right here. Thank you, Paizo, for having a very thorough and useful GM screen. Um, there's a couple major things that you you'd be wanting. Normally, if a, if a battle does happen, you're going to be rolling initiative with your perception most of the time. Uh, and it, initiative could technically be anything based on the circumstances of what started happening. But one of the primary things that you can do is if your stealth is better than your perception and you want to start the battle in stealth, your exploration activity can be sneaking, avoiding notice. And that would mean in just about any situation you're going to be rolling stealth instead of perception and initiative. And that kind of, it's really nice because it bypasses that weird first edition thing. Like you're in stealth and they have to roll perception checks to like see you, but an in, in initiative table is, it's... Their perceptions, their initiative's perception, and yours is stealth. So I mean, there you go. That kind of sets up exactly whether you got the jump on them or not, right there. Uh, beyond that, the other one that is directly, I am prepared for bad things to happen related is scouting. Uh, somebody who wants to be either out in the front, kind of scouting ahead, or watching around, not so much trying to investigate the surroundings as just looking for any signs of a threat. Will give the whole party a plus one bonus to the initiative rolls when combat starts. Uh, if you have a shield, keeping your shield raised is an activity you can be taking, focusing on keeping yourself defended. Uh, if you have the Detect Magic cantrip, you can just be casting that repeatedly, and you will detect magical things in the area. Uh, investigating what he's doing will let you allow to roll knowledge checks and whatnot, but the, the most common, probably, for just default, is searching. Uh, searching means you're just moving slowly through the area, looking around for any anything of interest really and you are the one who are going to get who's going to get prompted for perception checks to notice things you can also do that with 
most, if not any, cantrip, right? Yeah, it doesn't have to be. The tech magic's called out <clears throat> specifically because uh, it's like you can so keep ubiquitous. The shield but but yeah, any up, cantrip so. you can also repeatedly cast. So you could yeah keep magical shield up by just casting shield repeatedly. However, uh, sustaining a spell ten minutes for ten like it is a lot of work because Pathfinder casting is like a, an incantation in a specific motion. So if you if you use that for ten minutes or more, you will get tired. So you can't do that forever. But you can repeat any kind of a spell you can cast infinitely for a time. Okay. So, thoughts? Uh, Esphus will be scouting then. All right. So you will be alert, watching for danger. Yes. Uh, and then I will keep my shield up, be in the front. All right. So your shield is raised in front of the party. The bulwark, the champion. Yes. Doran? Uh, I'll be searching. And Resume? I'll be using detect magic. Okay. So we got so we got the one of everything group here. Yeah, so I figured that's the best way to go. So as you uh, just really roll good. well, no one was searching. Yeah, <laughs> nobody <laughs> searches. You walk into every walk trap. Zero perception checks. Everyone, <laughs> <laughs> you're shield in front of your face. Everyone else is just casting spells, and I can't I'm see past the flashing light. Symbols and stuff. This dude, he's like reading a book in the corner. Like, dude, this is awesome. <laughs> How did you defeat the champion of Ioma Day? We <laughs> shot him in the legs because <laughs> his shield is a dinner plate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. As the group of you approach the gates of Citadel Altarian here, you have a large castle sprawling out in front of you. Uh, you can see that it's still relatively well secured, and through the arrow slits on either side of the front doorway, you're going to be able to pretty easily see it is dark inside. Uh, you're going to want some sort of a light source, because I don't think anybody in this group has dark vision. Uh, I have low light vision, but not dark vision. Yeah, I'm just going to cast light on myself. Okay, that's what I gotta figure out because I gotta put light on people. And you ride um, on someone's shoulders. I'm gonna. You can I'm gonna. Ride on my shoulders. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna cast sure light on. Um, if you would. Yep. Yeah. Boopity boopity, and the light is I'm pretty sure still 40 feet in second edition. I don't think that's changed. So I'll go ahead and set that to 40 feet, and then have that reveal the fog of war automatically Ooh. because this is a super cool program. This Arkin Forge here. And then you said you were casting on Dalren as well? Mm -hmm. Dalren's glove, yeah. Okay. Also going to be lit up. Is anybody else bringing any kind of light source through? How did you know I had light? Uh, I have a torch. I may just bring a good old fashioned yeah, torch. Yeah, we actually have some torches if, I mean, if anyone else wants any other light hey, sources. You magical folk knew your magic. And I have a good old solid piece of wood. So, you yeah, you you can have a torch. You have a shield and a torch, mm -hmm. so... That's fine. Okay, I'm like, you can definitely do that. It's like, you don't actively have a free hand for stuff happening. Okay. But uh, if stuff happens, well... You can beat people with a torch. Can I can people, totally can beat people, beat people, people with, with a torch. Set it on fire. <laughs> it's a stick with fire attached to it. You can give beat the, people Give them that. the torch-based business. <clears throat> <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, how are you approaching this? Well, I mean, Very that looks good. fantastic. Right? Yeah, the door is already open. I mean, yeah. as long as there's no, like, obvious, like, bucket of dirty water perched on the top of the door, I think we're good to just go through. Uh, there's not appear to be no, but, I mean, you, you're, the, uh, you're the searcher, so give me a perception check there, Dalren. Yeah, I remember back when I was a kid. I did that stuff. Oof. Ah, with an eight. Do I see that bucket of water? Uh, there does not appear to be a bucket of water perched All right, on top yeah, of the let's door. Do it. <laughs> uh, as you look at it, you can see that in the intervening times it's been left here again, it is clearly very weathered, but it, uh, especially around the lower three, four feet of it or so, it does bear years of claw and scratch marks across it as well from all sorts of various wildlife just coming by and pawing at the thing. Scrapes and holes of a wide variety of sizes. Uh, nothing that looks outstandingly recent or outstandingly gigantic. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and uh, arrange yourselves how you want to move through this here doorway. And I will slide over the um, camera to here. I'll take up a uh, second to the back. I'll take the rear guard. Have you got to play the camera sliding game? Okie dokie, so then Roar comes up behind. <laughs> like a slightly shorter GM screen. I'm tall, but I'm only so tall. Alright, so like, yay! Yep. All right. <laughs> yep. And with that, you push open this door. Mm -hmm. We're adventurers doing dungeon things. Now, it is a mighty ancient set of iron hinges holding these gates in place. And as you push this doorway open, it 
but lets everyone in the surrounding area know with a, a massively loud groaning creak. Not just from the hinges, but from the door itself. And, uh... Espis as a whisper elf is just kind of like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Espis likes quiet. Are you dying? Uh, no, I laughed and coughed at the same time. <laughs> but as you open that door there, as you can push inside, it leads through to a foyer. And this foyer. noise... Foyer. This noise has very, <laughs> very much gotten the attention of the room's inhabitants. Three strange, hairless, pink dogs inside yeah. with Not teeth bared. I dogs. wonder what kind of dogs these are. Already angrily surging forwards towards the door. And so. that, my friends, is going to be an initiative check. <laughs> Am I you were scouting, right? I, I was scouting. scouting. Everyone, so yeah. Everybody yeah. gets a plus one. So Estes is back there being yeah. like, you guys hey, are dogs. an idiot. <laughs> what are you scouting? You're the whisperer. You're the one who knows. It's like, wow, that was a lot of noise. There's probably stuff in there that's going to notice the lot of noise. And they're like, oh, yep, that's stuff. Everyone gets a plus one. <laughs> Good point. Good point. I like it. I figured that was a little far away. I know. I always have trouble with Alrighty. 17 and 18. I always have a horrible time. Turn it. Too easy complicated math. And do I get a free check at these things? Uh, yes, you will get a free knowledge check. Let me get an initiative first. Yeah. Doran. Uh, 23. Okay, 23. I'm going to go here because I'm not going to overestimate myself anymore. <laughs> Resume. Uh, 14. Buddy. 16. I heard dog barks. Yeah. Espis. 26. Ooh. You are the most boy. ready. See, this is why yeah, we he brought was, he was. That's why he's scouting. I wasn't kidding, Super man. Super prepared. Rur. 26. Uh, who wants to go first? He can go first. Okay. So this was a 23. This is a 26. Let me get us some uh, spicy doggo in here. Or Turns pork. out he and I have the exact same initiative. So. Uh, okay, 24. Ooh. Quick dog. Well, mark, mark. doggo had the entire time the doorway was screaming itself open. <laughs> True. To prepare itself. He, he was very oh, clearly mark, mark. aware things were coming. The other two had to wake up. Hopefully. Another 24. Oh. Wow. Man, no, the I dogs, thinking I'm all fancy I left the, with my 23. Yeah. Hmm. She should have rolled one higher. You just suck. Should have considered rolling one higher. Yeah, next time. That's why um, I have my shield up, though. Yeah. <laughs> and a four. And a 20. Ah. Well, good thing I have my shield up. You do, in fact, have your shield up, which is a good start, because uh, there are some upsetty dogs there. So, Esvis, you are going to go first. As you look into this room, you see these dogs, these creatures, and uh, looking through here, this, this whole room is a massive, like, cluttered amalgamation of garbage. Uh, the north and south walls are lined with rusted and near-ruined old sets of Hell Knight armor, just husks lining what was probably once a pretty spectacular entryway. Uh, broken furniture and ruined books kind of scatter all throughout the floor of the room, as well as the half-chewed carcasses of a decent array of small prey animals. Uh, and there's a wide, unkempt and dirty stretch of black carpet leading up towards two more doors on the western side of the room, but predominantly three angry dogs. Okay. Um, for my first action, I will uh, hunt prey on this angry, spicy dog oh, right here in front. You guys probably want some doggo tokens, huh? Yeah, can I ask you students of dog tokens? Doggos! Does, does recall knowledge go before we... Oh, right, you or... recall knowledge. Sorry, you, uh, you, were, you were trying to recall knowledge. So, doggo is an animal, which is nature. Plus seven. So, uh, yeah, and this is a secret check. Thank you for remembering, because I didn't. Uh, <laughs> because if you critically yeah. fail this, you know wrong things. Mm -hmm. So with a plus seven, wow. I uh, Well, I, I did the opposite. You critically succeeded, so you're going to get a ton of uh, ton of doggo, and I'll give you that one for free. I everything because... about these. So you guys wanted me to roll this d20, and this d20 is rolled an 18, an 18, and 19, and a 14 so far. Are you sure you want me to use this one and not yes. the one that killed yes. everybody in Flamestone? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, this one doesn't seem to be doing you a whole lot more favors. It just got a critical success. A success well, yeah, that's, that's true. It's, it's, only been rolling, it's only been rolling for us so far. Yes, Rue, these are goblin dogs. Um, these are, in fact, 
goblin dogs, and they are just disgusting, lesser, inferior wolves. They are kind of surprisingly hardy and very, very angry, uh, but with a almost surprising intelligence. The biggest threat that they have is the same thing that a lot of goblinoid races do, which is that they are carriers of a disease, and they are particularly virulent carriers of disease, so their bites bring a lot more than just teeth. So that, uh, now it's this. Okay. He gets that because that was his expert oh, yeah, yeah. That was my bad. I forgot that. No weaknesses or resistances. No particular weaknesses. Or it's a dog stab in That's kind of what I figured. Um, so yeah, first action, I will hunt prey uh, this dog right here. Okay, so the nearest, the southernmost dog, hunted. All right, and then I will use... For people who don't know, what does that mean? Okay. Um, oh yeah, so... I don't actually really know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh. pretend like you know things. <laughs> oh, also, they're technically rats. They're not actually dogs. Oh. Interesting. Are they goblin rats? Or they goblin are, dogs they're are called goblin rats. dogs because they look kind of like dogs <clears> and they're really big, but they're actually giant rats. Huh. Oh. It's Nike. Neat. I read the stats for things that were pertinent, then I read the flavor text, and I'm like, holy crap, these are actually just rats. <laughs> just giant, disgusting dog so, rats. Giant rats are kind of like dog size, two goblins. We call so. them subway dogs. That's fair. Subway dogs. <laughs> these are New York pit bulls. Yep. <laughs> um, so with Hunt Prey, according to the Pathfinder core rulebook, uh, the Hunt Prey is I designate a single creature as my prey and focus my attacks against that creature. I have to be able to see or hear them, which I do. You can both. You can do both very easily. Um, I get a plus two circumstance to perception checks when I seek them and a plus two circumstance to survival when I track them. I also ignore the penalty for making ranged attacks within my second range increment of the prey I am hunting. Oh, that's nice. really neat. That's so you basically super. double the range increment on all your weapons. Well, not, not quite, because if they're further than two, you ignore the second, which means if they're in three, you'd still be taking the full penalty for the main yeah. three range increments. But still, but that's, the second is really like, good. How often do you realistically fight things that are that far yeah, away? Very true. Anyway, so he is now your prey as you're ready to destroy this first goblin dog. All right, uh, my next action will be to take the hunted shot. Um, which the uh, hunted shot allows me to make a multi-attack against my hunted prey. Um, and uh, I would normally do this with multi-attack penalties. However, I have the uh, hunted shot flurry. Uh, so what this does is it actually makes the penalty much less. So in okay. rather than a minus five on my second attack, I will get a minus three. So you shoot a, you're shooting a lot of arrows. I am shooting a lot Fair of arrows. Fair enough. So you are just going to uh, loose, uh, as you track this first dog, loose a pair of arrows to the door in a blink of an eye. Oh, the second almost as trained as the first. No particular haste, or not 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 a overwhelming haste. Planting both of them carefully. I like that. I like that. That's cool. Okay. So the uh, the purple here will be my normal shot. The yellow will be my. Uh, my penalty okay. shot. Okay, yeah, I can't see your dice, so you roll. No, no, you but that's roll. a great way of doing it. Yeah. That is a fantastic way to do it. So, what is your first shot? Uh, my first shot is a twenty-six. A twenty-six will hit. So your first arrow lands. Okay. Uh, my second arrow, unfortunately, is a seven. <laughs> seven definitely not going to hit. All right. So we have found we have we have bounded its AC <laughs> between seven and twenty-six. <laughs> Good science is being done here. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of your arrows is going to strike, so give me that damage. Okay, um, and it is a longbow, so d8. Maximum eight damage. Eight damage, a solid shot. Uh, before these dogs can even react or mount an assault, you land an arrow straight up into the, uh, the shoulder of this realistically gigantic rat. Uh, and is that three actions? No, that is two. Hunted shot is two shots for one action. Correct. That's spicy. Okay. Flurry of blows. Uh, that is flurry of shoots. Yeah. yeah. So I will take my. No flurry of bows. <laughs> uh, How do we both miss that? Yeah, we. How do we miss flurry of bows? I, I'm not. I can't even be mad at Jen because like we dropped the ball on that one. Uh, so I will take my third shot, but I do need to double check what my penalty is now. I believe it's minus six at this point because yeah. you do you just your flurry is just you take minus three instead of minus five. Correct. So yeah. a third normal shot is just going to be a minus six. Minus six. Okay. It's actually obtained. Yeah. yeah, it's it's by it's only slightly worse than most people's second hit. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this will be uh, plus so plus one to this roll. Uh, eleven armor class. Eleven is also not going to hit. Okay. We've narrowed it from seven to eleven. <laughs> okay, that's good. So with this flurry of arrows coming out as everyone begins to engage in this fight here, Ruhr, here in the middle, all of these whizzing over your uh, tiny shoulders. Uh, 
The dogs do have lesser cover because of you and Buford in the way. It hasn't stopped the first shot. But what do you do? I am going to call upon one of my blessings of Saren Ray. And while doing so, I will move over to here to get out of the way for any potential party movement. Taking cover up against the door, and I will blast a divine lance channeling good energy into that same dog that has already been shot. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to tell you a thing that we missed in Fall of Plague Stone. Just, uh, I told you. You told me oh, this? Okay. Yes. So, yeah, it only applies if they're evil. All right, fair enough. Yep. We did not realize that in the Fall of Plague Stone, those of you who watch this play through that on my own channel, we did not realize Divine Lance only does damage to evil aligned creatures because good damage does not do anything unless you're evil aligned. Uh, it's a 25 on the die. I, uh, 25 I don't, plus. Uh, like, wow. I, I'm going to confiscate yeah. that die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 20, 18 on the die, 25 total. As a 25, your lance strikes into this thing uh, with holy fervor, but while angry and vicious, it is just an animal. It's not inherently evil, it's just defending its territory. Uh, the lance strikes through, dissipating harmlessly. And that would be my turn. Okay, and that will bring us to Dagos. So I'm just going to have them go around clockwise. So the one that got hit is stunned by this assault of arrows here. Uh, the other is going to surge forward very quickly. This thing is at the door in a flash as it rushes up to Buford. Shield, fortunately, already raised. What is your AC? Uh, 19. So as it rushes forward, uh, a long rat-like tail whipping behind it. Once it opens its mouth, it becomes much more visible. This thing is clearly a rodent. Those massive, oversized canines snapping out towards you, threatening to rend. That's not on anything. I rolled it sideways. Uh, threatening to rend right through your armor. 19, you said? Yeah. Uh, and he is going to hit on this first attack. And I would raise my... Uh, uh, as I see him coming, I would raise my shield and kind of put it in between... As a, kind of predicting where he would hit. Your shield's going to take the brunt of the blow, fortunately. What's your shield's hardness? Uh, my shield's hardness is five. So with five, he is going to hit you for seven. Uh, the shield is going to absorb five of that. You and the shield are both going to take two damage. Okay. And then, uh, not deterred by this, he's going to try to push past your shield, uh, but he is going to fail to land any real hits on you. Uh, the other dog... Equally upset, is going to rush up into the doorway. This one towards Dalren. Uh, just the other closest target that it can sink its giant teeth into. What is your AC? I'm at 18. 18, you say? Uh, he is going to hit with that first strike just barely. And I forgot real quick for you. Uh, I'm going to need a fortitude save out of both of you. Okay. He's going to hit you also for 7 damage, oh, but you're oh, going to take the whole 7 damage. I'm going to take the whole 7 damage. Yeah, both of you need a fortitude save. I forgot about the... The diseases. Uh, fortitude. 13 for me. Is a 24. No, 24. Uh, Buford, you, I mean, he barely just scrapes his teeth through you. It's almost just like the impact of his body slamming into you. There's no chance you're really getting infected. But Dalren, uh, he gets a solid bite. Ah. And uh, you are going to contract this disease. Oh, no. And uh, it's... We immediately see blisters form across yeah, the Yeah, it's actually spectacular. <laughs> it's spectacular how quickly this works. <laughs> like, it's it's phenomenal how fast uh, you immediately feel it rack through you and you feel this just, like, fatigue kind of overwhelm you. It's almost more a poison than a disease hmm. because it happens just in seconds. I'm going to give you this card here, uh, but it's not going to apply to your immediate turn. It is not instant, but it will apply next round. Uh, you will be sickened one. Oy. He has the derpies. He just put pure sepsis into your wound. Pretty much, yeah. He, it, like, this thing is just a walking pile of infection. And when it bites into no. you, it's not good. I can spend an action to retch to try to recover. <laughs> sure can. <laughs> he bites awesome. your arm and you vomit the sickness <laughs> out. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> frightened and sickened are interesting conditions in second edition because both of them give you kind of a minus one to everything. Hmm. Uh, Sicken and Frightened both apply to all checks and DCs, which is seriously, literally everything. Your attack rolls goes down, your AC goes down, your saving throws go down. I think the only thing that's not a check or a DC is your damage. It comes to mind immediately. So it's Sickened one, you, uh, which again, you're not in yet. It's going to happen next turn. Okay. Uh, you're just one off 
all of your your everything on your sheet, basically. And uh, Frightened is the same thing, but Frightened reduces automatically at the end of each turn. Well, the dog, you have to stop and, and try to retch and over, overcome this. You have to spend actions to try and fend it off. Mm. But you are you can feel it setting in, but it's not affecting you yet. And it is your turn as the third dog charges forward with these bolts of energy and bolts of regular slamming into it. Okay, so uh, Dalren's feeling a little pressed here. He hasn't actually felt this pressed in quite some time. Uh, so I'm going to activate Dragon Rage. Uh, so, uh, Dalren's stature is actually gonna get a little st taller, straighter, his stance is gonna be a bit more open, and lightning is just gonna crackle up his body. His hair is gonna poof out a bit. And more importantly, it's gonna run down that, the, the, his polearm. Okay. Um, and he's just gonna, just kind of, sh just bark out, uh, disgusting trash and just smash the thing through the, through the, the dog, or at least try to. All right, so you <laughs> strike out the one in front of you. Uh, 19. 19 will hit. Okay, and uh, explosion of lightning as they hit it. Uh, that's going to be 4 and 7. 11 lightning damage. It's all lightning damage it's when you're raging? all lightning Holy damage. crap. Uh, not that it matters on this dog. That's just awesome. All right, so as you smack it, this blast of electricity, 11 damage racking through this dog. This single blow almost bringing it down. Uh, and uh, he's going to just kind of uh, bring that up. He's just, he, he looks offended that it's still up. <laughs> and he's just going to try to hit it again. Uh, that's a, that's, this is at minus two. So, no, minus, minus five. Minus five on your second attack. So that's, that's going to be a 16. A uh, 16 is going to miss. Uh, it's not going It's not going to deal damage. It's going to connect with the dog as it jukes to the side and kind of graze across, and you definitely see this little surge of sparks come off, but it's not enough to to realistically injure it in any way. Just okay. barely miss. Uh, and uh, then uh, for my next action, I'm going to probably try to just, just throw up this stupid goblin pox thing. That's so, not enough you're not yet. sickened yet. Oh, I'm not sickened. I don't yeah, have so this it's not, yet. it's not doing anything to you. Okay. Did you have sickened on that last roll? No. Okay. I mean, it doesn't. You said this didn't happen until next till next round, right? Right. Yeah. It's not going to remove the disease. It's going to remove the, the sickened. Okay. And you're not sickened. And I'm not technically sickened yet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, um, I've got an extra. That actually, I'm out of actions. Now I think about it. Rage takes an action to turn. Oh, out. okay. That's three. Oh yeah, I forgot. Rage is actually an action now, so that is three, uh, which will bring us to the last of the hounds, who has been hit by several arrows and a weird beam of light. He is confused, he is pretty hurt, he has no idea what's going on. So he is going to run over to the southern side of the room, away from all these bolts, yelping in pain, and take cover uh, behind what one of these big uh, suits of armor, something that it can put between itself and all of these arrows flying out towards <laughs> it. Uh, buddy. Uh, I am going to slam the my the torch that I have down slam it down trying to create some kind of like spark something kind of spook these rat thingies as I pull my hand back up I'm going to uh, take out my war hammer and just so put slam the, it down the ground yeah okay, I'm, I'm throwing it down what torch does and hit people no, so. no, 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 no. I believe it's just D45. I'm, I think it's just D45, but I was checking. Yeah, no, I'm just throwing it on the ground. Okay, throw it down on the ground. Fair enough. I was just like, I thought you were throwing down, like you were throwing down this no, goblin no, no, dog's no, no, head, no. bash it with a torch. All right, no, I take out my warhammer and I am going to, uh, like, thrust into it with the warhammer to try and shove this rat off of us. So you're shoving or attacking? I'm shoving. All right, shoving is an athletics trick. Oh, right. Um,. That's why it matters. Is it an attempt to do damage? No. Okay. Okay, yeah, because it's like, because a shove is not an atta attack roll, it's an athletics check. Which okay. I think your athletics check and your attack roll are the same number, but. They are, in fact, yes. So um, give me and your. And then can oh. I roll assurance for that, or is that something? You can assurance, yeah. You can assurance in combat. You absolutely can. Okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try an assurance in combat. That gives me a 17. So these things are pretty large and beefy, and they're mostly hairless, and it seem to, it seem to be just big piles of blisters and muscle. Uh, the things are easily three feet off the ground. They're very large <laughs> creatures. And as you try to uh, shove it back, uh, it's going to be big enough that you can't that easily get it off of you. Okay. Okay, and then I will keep my shield. Okay, and you, raise your, and you keep your shield raised. Uh, resume. Um... 
Resme, seeing that electricity clearly works on these things, um, will call down uh, an electric arc, uh, one on each of them. Okay. That is bolt of lightning surges between the two dogs in the doorway. And is it a save or is it a hit roll? Um, it's... Uh, an arc of lightning leaps from one target to another. You, you deal electricity damage equal to 1d4 plus your spellcasting ability Is modifier. Basic reflex save? Or? Basic reflex, basic yeah, reflex sorry. Basic reflex save. Okay, so they're both going to make reflex saves. Uh, so dog one, who has already been exploded by a oh. lightning goose arm, is... What's the DC? Uh, my spell... He's going to critically fail. It's not one. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> it's my spell save DC, which is 17. That's a two. So he's also... 17? He's also going to critically... You know... Okay, he doesn't critically fail. He regular fails. Uh, so the roll the damage. The first dog, who is already off balance, is going to we'll take, take max eight. And probably if he critically fails. Critically he fails, so he's going to take sixteen. Yeah, so he'll uh, take so sixteen. That, that dog is just going to be blasted away from the doorway. <laughs> he and very clearly can't handle electricity. Then the other one is going to take eight. Uh, a solid hit. So there's two left in here that are now both fairly injured, and I believe one action left for you. Uh, shield. Okay, and throw up a magical shield. And that brings us back around to Esvis. Okay. Your prey is hiding. Yes, my prey is hiding. I get to it without too much to um, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to handle what's in front at a time. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, I'm going to spend one action to move. Okay. I want to try to keep line of sight. Uh, it's going to take me off of the board, but I'm trying to be within my 30-foot range. <clears throat> oh, that's fine. Okay. So you just want to back up a little further than... Uh... The board can facilitate here. Yeah, basically, so that I'm at the 30 foot range. I um, can, uh, I can zoom this out some, but that's as far as the map. No, it's fine. It's, yeah, it's fine. So, it's fine. I'm all, I'm literally only one square back. So. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'll put you on the edge there. Woo! You're only one square short of a board. Apparently, um, and um, hmm. I'm just gonna take two shots at it. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll attempt. Well, we'll see how the first shot goes. I'll roll one shot. So the uh, question I do have is, does Hunter's Flurry only apply to your hunted prey or to everything? Because I'm not sure if the second shot's at a minus three or a minus five. Uh, let me double check that. Actually. Because I know hunter, Hunted Shot has to be your prey, but your Hunter's Flurry that you have just as a passive, I'm not sure if it has to be your prey or not. That's a good question. I will double check that for you. Session one, where we learn a new system and also brand new characters. Hmm. You actually... Uh, the Hunter's Edge Flurry is, um, it's just specifically your multiple attack penalty. Okay. Oh, no, it is It is against your Hunted Prey. Okay, so you it will, is, your so second shot is going to be a minus five. Yep. I wasn't sure. We're learning. Yes. Yep. We're learning a new edition. We're learning new characters. We're learning everything. Yes. Brand new class that we have not played with yet. Yeah, we haven't played with the Ranger at all. So this is the first time I've experienced a second edition Ranger. Okay, go for it. So first shot, normal attack bonus. And this is well, this well, the one, do one do doorway, right? Yes, yeah, so one in the doorway. <laughs> okay. uh, 25 armor class. 25 is definitely going to hit. Okay. If 25 does not hit, I'd probably concede this level one encounter. Uh, that's Plague Stone. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's just your average Plague Stone That's just your average. 25? No, you might have grazed him. You didn't really do any damage. I think, I think the highest they see in all of Plague Stone was 23. And it was when you were level three. <laughs> Don't whine. Anyway. Uh, all right, so for, uh, for damage, just one. Okay, so that arrow is just going to uh, graze, uh, kind of lodge into its flank. Deal of point of damage, but not severely injure it. And uh, second shot with the normal metal multi attack penalty. Okay. No, five misses. Uh, and that's, yeah, second shot is going to go wide. Let's bring us back to Rur. All right. Seeing as that particular casting of a spell was ineffective, I'm going to pull out my crossbow, load a bolt, and just kind of point blank shoot into this dog in front of me. All right. So that's going to be all three of your actions to pull it out, load it, and fire it. Uh, but let's see if you can put this dog 15. down. Fifteen. Fifteen is just barely going to miss. It's it's hard to shoot through the doorway. You've kind of got your team in the doorway here. Try not to hit it's them. It's difficult for both of you to get arrows and bolts into these smaller dogs in front of Buddy, who is a wall of armor with, and a shield, and Dalren, who is a ball of lightning right now. <laughs> difficult to see what exactly it is you're going for. But that One is, is going to uh, yeah, two uh, doggo two is dead. But that is going to bring us to Doggo 1, who is going to, again, just attempt to savage Buford. He doesn't have much else going on in his life. So 19, <laughs> you said? Yes. Uh, first attack is going to miss. Is your bite, Agile? It's not. No. 
Second oh, attack's actually gonna hit. Okay. And he's just gonna attack again. He hasn't taken a ton of damage. He's still largely okay here. That one's gonna miss. Yeah, that's the Hail Mary. Another on the Hail Mary. So your shield is up. He gets one hit on you, or you're going to block this one. I will block it. All right. And he hits you for six. So you and your shield take a single point of damage as you're able to almost wholly keep this dog away from you. Steel Shield doing Steel Shield's job. One of my favorite changes in second edition, by the way, shields are awesome. Shields now, are really good. They are really yeah. great. They do things. They do so things. what is the break threshold of your shield? Uh, my HP is 20 and oh, so break threshold is 10. 10. So it's yeah. only taking three. Your shield's fine. Yeah. Uh, so roll me a fortitude save. She doesn't have that crappy wood shield. Marm she doesn't done. have the dumpster oh, plank. I have a dumpster plank. It is steel. Ooh, nat 20. Ooh. Uh, yeah, you are. You, this thing you can't get, really get a bite on you. I'm like, I'm <laughs> You're just taking tiny, tiny bits of damage. Well, it's hard this to thing just... beat into, like, bite into steel. It's it's, it's yeah, a I tough. Mean, you, you, it's <laughs> almost entirely just getting shield, so you're not yeah. really being exposed to this very much. Uh, well, Dalren, however, is, and now you are sickened one, so you will take a minus one to all your checks and DCs. Okay. Uh, so, but you can uh, rest to try and remove it. Uh, so the first thing that uh, I'm going to do is I actually am going to try to do that because this is really annoying and it's getting to me and he's just not really happy with it. He's going to kind of internalize this lightning and try to force this sickness out of him. Uh, uh, that's like a, an eight. And uh, yeah, then you are you are definitely lightning still, is not a good yeah, medication. Lightning is not actually medication. <laughs> uh, the opposite of anything, so it does not make you feel any better. I have learned this. All right. Well, again, uh, this is again. I'm happy. He's just he just looks offended for having to deal with this this walking trash in front of him. There is nothing that prevents you from, I guess, just attempting to uh, do it again repeatedly, I, which is. Guess what I, I was could. checking really fast, I don't believe anything stops you from just regging repeatedly. Dalrin the bulimic. throw up on the floor. <laughs> it, it has flo it has flourish. Retch is a flourish keyword, so you can only do it once. Oh, does it? I have no idea. But oh, I was like, does it really? It's like <laughs> <laughs> That's weird, but okay. Peek out. Yeah, you spectacularly vomit onto the floor. He's getting punched in the face. He'll uh, uh, bring his uh, pole down and try to just dig this bladed hook into the back of this and tear a chunk of flesh out of it. Uh, that's going to be an 18. All right, 18 will hit. Uh, so that's going to be 13 lightning damage. And that is absolutely just going to blow this uh, hound away. Uh, with a little bit of damage it's taken so far, that is a truly mighty blow. Nearly enough to lay the thing low alone, definitely enough to kill it in its slightly injured state. So two dogs now laid dead in the doorway, blasted apart by lightning and blades. Uh, last action, uh, Dalren is going to um, uh, hold the uh, pole in his offhand and pull a javelin out. All right. Uh, then that will bring us to last dog, who uh, nothing has happened to him since he's hidden, but he's still mad and hearing explosions and people that need to be bit in the doorway. He has no particular attraction to one versus the other of you, so he is going to go for Dalren because you happen to be closer. Sounds reasonable. Uh, and just surges in through the doorway. So your AC is... Uh, 17, 17 now. 17 now. That open state, that open stance isn't... Uh, the first bite, he is just going to miss as he comes in, tripping over the still crackling bodies of its family. Second bite, also going to miss. Uh, not particularly, like, they're swift of foot. They move very quickly, but their bites are pretty committal. They're not agile or anything. They're not great at multi-attacking here. Buddy. Got it out of the way. Okay. I uh, see this other rat. This, uh, my hammer is already out there, and I'm just going to kind of golf swing this, try and hit hit the rat with this war hammer <clears throat> with a uh, 11. 11 is not going to hit the rat, no. Uh... And then I am going to, again, try and shove it back. I kind of miss it, and then I'm just going to try and shove it back. Right, so it does stop the attack rates as well as my yeah. five. Um, so that is going to be a 23, 22. 22 is yeah. absolutely going to shove the dog. So do you, what do you want to shove it? Do you want to shove it diagonally um, back away from you or like straight back into the room? I'm going to shove it straight back into the room, and then I am going to step right up in front Oh, look at this! Look at this tanking that's happening! <laughs> he uses Warhammer, forces the dog back, and steps up in front of his injured, retching comrade yeah. to protect him as he can. Resme. Does Warhammer have backswing? <clears throat> um, no. Resme will step to the side um, so she doesn't hit any of her compadres. 
Um, and then uh, she will fling um, one of her sling bullets um, magically powered uh, into the rat telekinetic projectile. Ye olden. I like how both of you two kind of came back with the same character as you had in Plaguestone. Large glaive man and I am telekinetic. <laughs> <laughs> It means I don't have to learn new things from you, too. <laughs> that handy. is definitely going to be uh, a miss. That is a three. Uh, yeah, three is certainly, uh, I mean, you saw your modifier, but yeah, it's definitely, unless your modifier is yep. like plus yep. 15, definitely not connecting. Uh, brings us back to Esmus for round three. Okay. Um, your prey's back. I can still, I can still, see, I can see my prey with all of those. Yes, yeah, so you can definitely yeah. see your prey. He still has lesser cover because most of your party is in the way. I'm going to move then, so five to... Try to keep thirty feet. Okay, so uh, keep thirty feet. But can I see? Is is my party still in the way with this kind of line? Uh, no, I'll give that to you. Okay, I don't think you take that shot. Move over to the side. Okay. All right. So I will. Um, I'll take a hunted shot. Okay. Yep. And this one is the one that you yeah. have already stuck an arrow into. Yes. So very successfully. Hold it. So, hold, it. hold. So first shot. Is a 25. Nice. 25 is good. This dog is the dog that gets hit a lot. Clearly. You you have, cushion. This dog just, just walks into every arrow. Uh, seven points of damage. Seven points of damage is that first arrow alone is enough to put him down immediately. Okay. Uh, combined Work. with the uh, the two arrows, you put one in, he took cover, he came out, you put another in, one in, and he's down. Two shots, zero dog. And uh, with that, the sounds of combat do finally fall silent around this entry hall. But Citadel Altarian, as or Altarian, as you had been warned, is a fairly dangerous area. Uh, full of at least goblin dogs. <laughs> Dalren, you look How many of my kinda, can I recover? You look kind of green. Recover any, can't recover any. No, you, uh, anything that's ammunition that's fired in Pathfinder is just considered gone. Okay. So, uh, because I mean, they're, they're not amazing arrows they're just basic they're like thin shafted okay. simple wood so the ones that missed are going to like splinter or splinter on the stone be too stone. off yeah or okay. be too much of a curve or a knock or the arrowheads are chipped uh, anything you fire from your bow is considered to be unrecoverable okay you kind of look like you want to throw up are you okay well, yeah maybe your fortitude safe let's do that uh hey 21 uh with a 21 you are able to uh kind of come to and overcome this wave of sickness and uh, while you still, maybe a little sniffly in your throat doesn't feel great as it sets in, you are no longer sickened and you are through the worst of it. I'm immediately going to tell you to sit down before this festers. I have to treat this immediately. They're disgusting creatures. Hey, yeah, I, it's, as the, the, the lightning kind of calms down for a bit and kind of Dalren kind of comes right. back to his kind of more like scholarly kind of... <laughs> Tottering little guy, tottering guy he doesn't totter actually. He's quite agile, but <laughs> I was gonna say, tottering doesn't really seem like yeah. we described all red so uh, far. Uh, 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 yes, uh, thank you, thank you, friend Roar. So are you some kind of like lightning man, or like I don't understand where exactly that all came from? Oh, uh, my research. It comes from my research. Is that what books do? If you study them long enough, but not just books, the actual cultures, the actual beasts themselves. I've learned, I started to unlock the secrets of the dragon kind, of what their magic is. Dragons? I'm yes. actually not familiar Surely with I've that kind of magic. Dragons. Can I get an arcana roll? If you've talked to him for any length of time, he probably I don't know if we've ever met. Yeah, it's probably I don't know if we've ever met because I'm kind of a dull guy. He probably wouldn't be super interested in me. <laughs> to be fair, I've achieved the same thing through studying religious texts. You're it's also a lightning man? Not quite lightning, but I have discovered powers through worship and study. Same ah. as him. Well, I, well, I get my, thing. I mean, that's prayer stuff, and I get prayer stuff, too. My God's really, really <laughs> real nice about that. <laughs> I own, but I always watches over. Do you worship dragons? No, certainly not. Although there are plenty of cultures that do. He starts going on a well-practiced <laughs> tirade, talking about the cultural implications of dragon kind and draconic motifs in the mortal races. And the entire time that that's happening, we're going to be patching up that wound on your arm. So I'm going on for at least ten minutes. So, yep. uh, so you are you are resting here in this uh, this first foyer for ten minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he, as he rants and Roar attempts to tend to you. Uh, what do the rest of you want to do, if anything? As is just keeping. <coughs> yeah, just, just keeping your eye out. He's yeah. You got the goblin pox. It's the bad times. Yeah. 
It's unfortunate. I feel goblin poxed. That is a 22. Uh, 22, yeah, you will successfully restore 2d8 health to him. Uh, uh, so one of the rats, or the rat that bit my shield, uh, is kind of torn off the rim on the shield, and it's kind of spry looking. Like still functions, springy. but it's, still it's not great. So I'm going to get my little re- repair kit out. I pull it out and try and just warp warp this back around yeah. so it's round Give me a again. craft check. <laughs> oh, this is the wrong die. See, it was the wrong die. God damn it. It was only like a five. So uh, with your time wrong there, die. just trying to, you, you do what you can. You pull out your crafting kit. You got some tongs and a, like a rubber-headed mallet to try and beat it a little more into, into shape. And you make it look superficially better, but uh, you, you don't really repair That's the structure. That's why I need that guy, all. that See, expertise down. You grab the rubber head mallet to fix steel. You still yeah. got the. You still I, got this three is why I need to shield. talk to that guy downtown for those <laughs> blacksmithing lessons. So, uh, Resume, you got 10 minutes. Are you. Uh... Um, I'm actually listening to him going on about dra- draconic culture. I'm not familiar with it. Um, she's actually kind of interested. She'll just kind of sit there and listen. So while you're being treated here, you you have at least one very interested party and one who is around you uh, just healing, doing what med- uh, medicine work you can. Espa's looking around, making sure no one's there, and Buddy just sort of banging on his shield with a mallet. <laughs> um, what about Warble? Making a bunch of ruckus, but not really accomplishing a whole lot in the corner. I don't think Warble came yeah, in Yeah, she didn't us. come with us. Warble did not come in. Warble's at your campsite. Okay. Uh, so Warble's, like, at the campsite... Uh, just kind of waiting, so you don't have to worry about like moving your tent or anything. You can just leave it there. Warble, Warble will watch it. Uh, but as you, as as you're looking around, uh, just kind of inspecting the area and the room here, you can see that there are a couple things of interest up around on the walls here in the torch light. Uh, the torch light, the, just leaving your torch just all on the ground, or did you, did you go back and pick it back up I and retorched? Don't, I don't waste no torch. What are you, some kind of like hooligan? So you pick your torch back up. Uh, on each wall is a prominently displayed seal depicting that sunburst made out of nails. Uh, move inside. Yeah. Also carved in relief and the, like in the largely the same the same design that it had outside above the front door. Uh, and closer to the ceiling along each wall is another line of script. But these ones are in common. Uh, there's no way to tell from common to infernal if it's the same thing or if it's something else, but the ones in here read, Savagery must be quelled in the land, home, and mind. Hmm. Very philosophical. Not sure how it applies, but philosophical nonetheless. So, after your brief respite there, shield unrepaired, but uh, Dalrin at least somewhat but Dalrin repaired. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Dalrin repaired. Shield mm-hmm. not repaired. Dalrin repaired. Uh, go ahead and set yourselves he's however gonna, you want to be. He's gonna drag that map. I know he yeah. is. I'm yeah. Map, so. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> the entire floor just woo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll stand right in the Move middle of this room. A little bit. So we have a little more range there. So there's two doors. There are two doors. There's a northern and a southern door leading out of the western side of this room. These suits of armor, are these like de- decorative suits of armor? Or are they actual like functional suits of armor that or were functional? They look functional like they were point? fully functional suits of armor. These were full sets of Hell Knight plate. What uh, in but the they're world? all dented, rusted, uh, they're all ruined in a way. This is real armor. Of, these, yeah. these these this this was at one point the fully functional. This would have been very expensive. They just left this here? What caused them to leave? That would have just left them this is a small fortune worth of armor in this room alone. Yeah, what a, what a waste. Something tells but me it a society is very large and heavy and would have taken a lot of effort to transport this, like... Yeah, but leave well, someone but here. They're expensive. But they're expensive. They're real expensive. plate. It's it not... Is, <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't look like... It's not particularly thick, so it may be more ceremonial or decorative, but they are still full sets of plate. That said, nearly all of the helmets, boots, and gauntlets... A little bits that would be salvageable and still usable, even given their state, have almost all been looted hmm. or felched at some point. Uh, goblins. Goblins, doing goblin things. So it's mostly just tipped over torsos and cuirasses just scattered throughout the room or still stood up on their stands uh, near either wall. So, where, which, where, how do you want to proceed here? Um, where are we heading did, to? Did uh, she give us any kind of directions as to where, where, where to, how to get to her? Vaults where her goblins live? No. 
Mm. Also, she doesn't really know where they are because they're not in the vaults because smoke is coming up, so they're they're up somewhere, and the smoke looks like it's coming up from the battlements. But uh, she's not super familiar with the layout of the Citadel itself because she's never really explored it. Very I suppose much. we should try to make our way up to the tower then, since that appears to be where the bumble. Does anyone remember what they're called? Bumble brashers. Bumble brash. Bumble brashers. It seems to be that's where they're go that's where they're holed up. So we should probably make our way up there. Um, I suppose one door is just as good as the other. I you'll mean. see uh, Resme um, concentrate and kind of get this weird look on her face, and her expression will kind of change, and her body language um, will change a little. Um, I'm going to use ancestral memories uh, to gain a lore architecture. Okay. Um, to see if I can figure out um, what would be the most natural layout of this castle. Okay. Um, to figure out what what a good way to go would be. Absolutely, roll me a lore architecture. Lore, lore castles or lore whatever applicable. Whatever applicable. Engineering. Lore Citadel blueprints of this fortress specifically. <laughs> okay. Lore, um, lore the layout place. of Citadel. That Altarian. is going to be a 25. Okay, oh, well, the 25. Uh, you focus and you let this this other almost mindset come through. Um, from the outside you can see that Citadel Altarian appears to be built of two wings around a central keep. Uh, and that keep visibly had four towers, one dotted around each corner. It's difficult to tell fully from the outside how the inside would be arranged, but those towers are most likely going to be your access points up and they're dotted around the central like the central keep of the, the building itself and shouldn't be too far ahead past either of these doors in either direction if not that in the center of the keep itself would almost certainly be the stairs leading up because stairs leading up to the top outside of the keep would kind of defeat the purpose of a central keep well gents it uh, appears it doesn't really matter what door we go through we're going to get to where we need to go yeah, fortress, and that's what matters it looks largely <laughs> symmetrical towards either side from the outside there's two wings in that central keep so like no the for the for the question you want here there's no real indication of which north or south is going to help you more come on both are right this is going to be fun let's go so we're going to the right then sure that works the i right like the right go. yep that works Alrighty. Sound good to me. Let me drag some tokens. <laughs> See if we were gonna get like. Pretty, this is gonna pretty much be the party's default. Formation. Yeah, I just have to largely drag them individually. If yeah. we wanted to get like a mega Ultima into a super setup here, we get like a touch screen so you guys can drag your own freaking tokens. Ooh, that, that would wouldn't nice. actually work because I have to manipulate them from the other one <laughs> yeah. here. It wouldn't work good if we had that. But. You prepare yourself at this door, and buddy opens it up. Yep, with my shield. Push it open with your shield. <laughs> no chances. As this door swings open, uh, it reveals a hallway beyond. And let's zoom this out just a little bit further here. This is uh, looping around to both the north and the south end, uh, a hallway that seems to run around the outside of the central keep of Altarian. So again, you have two directions, and it doesn't seem to particularly matter which way you decide to go. Keep going right. So. Right is right. Mm -hmm. I've can... always liked the right. Don't worry, no, yeah, give it a sec. I'm gonna move the map here. Okay. Can I multi? Hey. Ah, hmm. There's a hallway, there's, there's you everything. know. Whoops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert. Oopsie poopsies. This, this Oopsie right. There's a thing. I, don't, okay. I didn't see anything. I don't so know what's multi happening. multi-dragging doesn't super work because multi-dragging just reveals everything that anyone gets dragged over. But the good news is I can easily fix that, given the power of this particular thing, because I have all of the tools just right here. Replaced it with something completely different. I can change everything. Easy. I'm God. How is this drop? Rule zero. I do this. Okay, I can do that. That hides everything outside of people with a light. I don't really want to do that. Well, if you turn that on, turn it back off, would it revert the... Well, that's what I did. It, it, I can actually... No, I think I will keep this. I don't think we necessarily need to see the... Uh... Where we've been. Where you've been. I don't think that's super important. I think I'll keep this up. That seems like it's probably the easiest way to do it. Again, it is a new map-making system that I'm using here. So we are 
adjusting to not roll 20. Oh, wow, the arrow slits actually have mm -hmm. dynamic lighting. The arrow slits them. actually have dynamic lighting. That is, lighting. Too that cool. is so cool. It's pretty neat. Uh, this this table this this whole VTT is really awesome. It's just new, and I need to get mm. used to it. Uh, so there will be some floops as I learn how we use this thing. And uh, it seems like the dynamic fog being on the trade off is you can't see where you've been. For it's just normal. It's basically the equivalent of roll twenty's dynamic lighting in this setting. Yeah, that's fine. I'll probably just use that because that that's seems fine. like it's the easiest. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So another door ahead of you. Uh, in this small, maybe eight foot wide hallway living around the keep. And as you open it and pass through, you would see it leads into a very small tower. Now this tower is largely full of rubble and ruin on one side, the southern end of it facing the keep, seeming to have sustained a lot of damage fairly recently. And the western side of this isn't even a wall so much as it is just a pile of stone. Uh, but it leads through to another door on the northern end that may loop back around to the other side of the keep. Okay. Right. I guess, uh... So I'm going to continue. I'm just going to move Buddy for the time being because, uh... Okay. Yeah, I guess we're back in our, our yeah, and, exploration mode. Yeah, you're, you're doing your exploration mode things. I'm just... Oh, you know what I could do? Were I a smart person? I could probably just stack all the tokens up. And then drag them all as a lump, and then splay you out into your formation. Oh, oh my like god! Ha -ha. Mind blown. That's that basically how like Final Fantasy used to do it for a long time. Your main character and everyone just kind of walked, walked into yeah. them. Yeah. Oh yeah, they would literally do that. They would actually just pile in in a big group like that. So what I need to figure out table setup wise is how to not have to turn like 110 degrees mm -hmm. <laughs> to access the computer and everything. I'm mean, going to want to move the desk closer up here. Perhaps I did not need quite this much space. But again, we are learning. Yeah, and we I can play with it. I appreciate all you guys bear with, bearing with us because we have a very new setup here. And we are working with it as we go. I know I'm turning away from the microphone right now, but it's because I am doing a ton of stuff on this map. It has to be done. He's doing, you're doing, you're doing. I'm doing things. You're doing game master things. Mm -hmm. Game mastering, okay. So as you pass through that small outer tower, you can see clearly through the arrow slits that you're still on the outer edge of the fortress. You can still very clearly see out to the sunlight outside, uh, but you're looping around the, past a door on your left and up towards what almost looks like a small courtroom mocked up in front of you. Uh, it looks like a judge's bench, a witness stand, counselor's tables, up on a small podium with a few benches laid out in front of it, up ahead of you, past the doorway on your left. Well, maybe they held some sort of tribunal here? Does well, anyone I'm... know anything about these Hell Knights? I mean, this in particular, you could give me, uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and snub you guys like lore Hell Knights. <laughs> that would be too convenient. Uh, but you can still just throw me a society. Here. All right. Uh, not in particular. That's a 10. I don't know a ton about this branch you know, I mean, of Hell Knights. The, the 10, that, yeah. A lot of people outside of the Hell Knight order don't really know a whole lot about Hell Knights. So it's... I could tell you, like, the general aspects of a Hell Knight, but that's about all you're getting out of me. Yeah, but you've got, you, you really have no idea as to uh, mm -hmm. what it is they would have been doing. I mean, it's entirely, they, they're, you know they are largely a self-sufficient entity that while, they, while they're often used as an arm of the Chelish government, are not directly affiliated with the Chelish government. They, they do kind of run their own thing. They almost operate outside the laws to some extent. Mm. Uh, that's, that's not entirely true, but that, that's, like, that's how it would seem to an outsider to someone who doesn't know more about how they operate. I guess I'll just keep walking right in. Yep. So you're going towards the door or are you going into the... Yeah, uh, let's go check out... Well, I like this chain of chamber. This chamber is pretty cool looking. Ooh. So as you move up in here to a uh, fairly large... Uh, this fairly large court chamber, uh, it sprawls up and around. You can see on your right, on the eastern side here, there's a full section of the walls that have just crumbled down and broken away. I'm just leaving a, an opening to the outside world where anyone could come and go as they please. Uh, forward up ahead of you, there appear to be what were once 
a few separated chambers on the northern end of this room, but whatever doors they may have had and largely whatever walls once separated them have also crumbled down because you can see out into the daylight just straight ahead of you as well out the northern side of Citadel Altarian. Hmm. What's most interesting is to your left. Once upon a time, uh, this looks like it's an area that was somewhat partitioned off, maybe a viewing gallery of some sorts for this small courtroom. Uh, it's separated by a three-foot tall partition. And that's that, uh, I guess that little bar doesn't necessarily move block a line of sight, but it would be kind of Just challenging for, for me to change that. Just for <laughs> mm-hmm. Actually, I think I can grab it. Can I? I think I can. Eh. There we go. Ooh, Got him. That. that wouldn't block line of sight. Uh, it's only three feet high. But you can see over that little divider there into an open area that was, again, clearly just viewing for the courtroom, uh, full of filthy blankets and gnawed bones. Uh, clear signs that a creature has nested there for obvious to anyone. Hmm. Uh, but if you want to make a nature check and potentially know more than that as you look around... Uh, no, there's not really anything here with the natural Something one. There's probably lives in there. Yeah, or lives. No distincting factors. Or has considered living and has jumped forward through time to pre-prepare its nest. <laughs> Couldn't possibly give you a guess as to what lives here. Can Obviously, it's carnivorous. Yeah, hey, Espis, is this is something you know about? You know all about those animals. So uh, you can, uh, with exploration mode, if you want to switch and try to investigate that, you, you can, but you're, no, you're doing that, you're no longer scouting. So like if something pops out of there, no, you don't all get the plus one to initiative. Basically, you can only do like one thing at a time. So if you want to roll uh, nature or try to investigate that, you can by not scouting anymore. And you can just switch at any time what you're doing. That's okay. not like restrictive. It's just like you are providing a benefit at any given time. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, I'll switch to investigating and I'll try to roll a nature check as well. Okay, so give me a nature check. Or don't you roll so, these also, or no? Esfis just kind of walks over this and is just, just oh, okay. looks through the filth and whatnot. It's a secret check when you're discovering stuff about Yeah, if, you, if there was a creature uh, okay. there and you were acknowledging it'd be secret, but this is just okay, your okay. rolling yeah, to see. Okay. I'll try to minimize how many secret rolls I have to make, because okay. if you don't get to roll any dice, are you really even playing a role-playing game? Are you just sitting <laughs> here going on an adventure while I roll all your dice for you? True. <laughs> uh, total of 16. Uh, with a 16, it looks like it is some kind of canid. Uh, you can see clear signs of either like a wolf or a coyote or something similar uh, from the bite patterns on the bones so that you can see to what they have decided to collect around here. It looks like something of the sort. It looks like it's not a goblin dog. It's not a rodent of any kind, but it looks like it's been put together somewhat almost intelligently. So either somebody very familiar with wolves tried to put together something to be super homely for wolves, or not sure beyond that. This, An intelligent wolf. So as brain this, wolf. As Esvis is looking over, he kind of picks up a little bit of the filth and just kind of drops it back down, and he rubs uh, between his temple, or he rubs on the bridge of his nose. It appears that something has helped make a nest. So are you like you like moving in to investigate? Yeah, moving in to investigate. So probably like. Okay. Like right around here, we're seeing the filth and whatnot. I'm gonna dispense. Oh, there's a doorway right there. So yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, I'll go look up at that uh, cool little di- di- uh, dais. 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 Dais X. On the dais. On the dais. All right, I like dispense. <laughs> uh, so as you step in and uh, start checking out that filth, and you you get a little closer here, you hear growling. Uh, clearly agitated, defensive growling and barking, but it's very small, uh, coming clearly from an incredibly tiny creature. And as you look over into the the corner down here, you see two tiny puppies clustered up into a pile of these blankets and filth, uh, baring their teeth at you defensively and angrily kind of yipping. Uh, they're both, they're each about maybe the size of a house cat, but they look incredibly young for how surprisingly large they are. And then either of you two go ahead and make me a nature check because you are doing the think. 
For knowledge of the creatures? Yes. That's you. Oh, that's me. Yeah, that's secret. That's They're me. both plus seven, so. Are you both plus seven? Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. We have surprisingly identical stats in a few things. Okay, so... Puppy! They are tiny puppies. Bark, bark. They're upset puppies. They're not that tiny. Just waiting for that baby Cat-sized mama to puppies. come around. Yeah. So... Um, both of you would recognize these as warg puppies, uh, which would make sense given the area. Wargs are basically... They're, they're not really not even animals anymore. Uh, they have near human intelligence. Uh, they are incredibly... They're, they're like super intelligent, super evil wolves. And they're a massive threat because they are so capable. Uh, and because they can think, they can plan, they can strategize. Uh, they can even communicate. And uh, adult wargs can understand entire languages. They can't really speak on account of being wolves and not really having a people mouth. But if given a way to communicate, they absolutely can. Like they can literally hold a, a like a pan in their mouth and write things. Like they are smart. They're and they are very inherently evil creatures. These are probably one of the biggest threats that any outlying East Gary town would face. Just because, again, how deadly they are. Well, upon relaying that information to everybody, I am going to put forth the recommendation that we kill these. We find the mother and the father, and we also kill those and any of their relatives. I do, uh, I am concerned. Yeah, okay, that sounds reasonable. Maybe I'll start... Chopping up puppies. Scouting around a bit. So, uh... I'm going to be looking out for any uh, adults. So you're... Scouting. Buford's going to switch to scouting and over his shield a bit and look around to see if there is possibly a bigger, angrier warg somewhere. I'm going to switch to casting shield, just in case. (laughs) Keep a shield in front of you in case of adult warg. Right, well, I guess in that case, uh, Dalren's just going to go ahead and just take his uh, spear and just stab those things. And uh, with that, we don't really require any uh, attacks or damage rolls or anything there. They are too small to really pose any kind of a threat to you. Right now they are. Yeah, at the moment, they, <laughs> which is exactly why we're dealing with them. Yes. At the moment, they are definitely too small to be able to pose any real threat to you. So stepping into the room, Dalren, uh, you could easily just put these creatures down. That'll work. Uh, we may want to get moving here. I don't want anybody to find us. All right, let's go back through the door. Yeah, back through that door. There's nothing in here. For well, us. there seem to be some doors well, actually 20 here. 20 bazillion more doors. Yeah, yeah. but we have uh, the previous door we have to deal with first. Leading through this this wing. Are we going to go through every single door around here? Well, if we need we're to. We're looking for goblins, aren't we? They're not going to be su- super subtle. <laughs> well, they might be subtle enough to close the door behind them, especially if there's wargs running around. Hey, any goblins over there? We also probably don't want to leave anything behind us. So I guess we can run back and check out that last door. Uh, all right, so you're going to back up. I'm gonna create the stack. And I'll move you back over. You going back to... Uh, if you'd like to go back to... Uh, yeah, I'll go back to scouting. I'll go back to raising my shield. I'll go back to making sure that, like... We don't get like crushed by a boulder. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. Usually pretty helpful. And so, as you head back out, you open this next door. I'm just for simplicity going to start deleting doors mm. because we're clearly not the kind of people who close doors behind us. No. I'm just no. gonna go back to delete. I'm gonna begin deleting doors for ease. This leads into uh, a room that was lined once with very plush crimson curtains, which are now shredded into absolute tatters. Uh, scuffs revealing where portraits had once hung before they were looted long, long ago. Trash and rotted food lying in heaps across the floor, like tiny, moldering corpses. And two more doors leading north or further west of the wing out of here. Hmm. Um, north. Well, the northern door is probably going to lead back. Yeah, we into know the exactly where that door goes. So let's leave that closed for now. That leads back to puppies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
West it is. Ex puppies. Actually, um, ex puppies. I'll probably say this just to, uh, and it's not just to annoy you, I promise. But um, when we're in here, let's actually close the door behind us. <laughs> so there's no ward turns coming around. That would be the reason. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, now that you mention closing doors, <laughs> yeah. what you say? I love closing doors. <laughs> that sounds like an excellent idea. Can I have you close the one door that you deleted, please? <laughs> what are Don't players need, None for? of the rest of the doors matter. I want the one door that you deleted off. <laughs> See, we only have to worry about that from Dalrun. We don't have to worry about that from Buddy. Mm-hmm. Well, the good Don't news is I, uh, I learned on the next map how to do these doors a little bit better so I can swing them much more freely because they actually rotate on the hinge mm. if I use the right doors and not these doors. Because these doors rotate about their centers. So I have to turn them and then move them, and it's annoying. But the doors in every other dungeon from now on will actually swing on hinges so I can just freely and easily rotate them open and not Wait. have to worry about it. Nice. So uh, you put secret doors on every single door on the map on this one. Yes. I'm so confused. <laughs> I, was, I was learning Ark and Forge. I put the secret doors everywhere. Everything is, or doors that you're not actually supposed to interact with that are just there to be like an obstacle that exists. I put like, not the actual swinging dynamic lighting doors because I am stupid. So <laughs> again, new virtual tabletop for learning. So this is great. You open that door, which leads into a very small connecting hallway. Do another door, which I will take the liberty of assuming that you also open. Yes, yes, yep. yes. And now I should probably split everyone here. Uh, as this leads into what was clearly like a records room of some sort. Uh, wrecked and decimated like near everything else in this old citadel. Toppled shelves and filing cabinets strewn records, throughout the room. Records, you say. And yeah, this sounds like a real good room. Southwestern mm. side of this room is also completely collapsed and open to the outside. Hmm. So there oh. are numerous places you could just walk in here from anywhere. Anywhere. All uh, right. Without the front door full of angry goblin dogs. So you kind of got to line up a bit here because there's not a ton of space available. And move forward into this room, which as this is open to the outside and as it is open to the air and so easily accessible, there is a lot of growth that is just kind of spit in here. And that growth has attracted some relatively angry creatures. So as you move in, if you want to start, go ahead and roll on some initiative checks for me. Uh, plus one since I would return back to scouting. Plus one because he would return to scouting. Oh, excellent. Excellent. There are three large rats. Actual rats. Just gigantic rats. Much smaller than the goblin dogs that wriggle their way out of the wreckage from underneath flipped uh, cabinets. Uh, one of them actually just forcing aside a toppled shelf on top of it as these things, while not quite goblin dogs, are still very large, very angry, and unsettlingly strong. Mm. Ick. So, oh, you still have the dog tokens. I do. Just use the dog tokens. I will use the dog tokens. <laughs> Okie dokie. Resume. 23. 23. I'm going to start using that as the general baseline. Yeah. You go right in the middle. <laughs> Buddy. 18. 18. Okie dokie. Esmus. 28. 28. Oh, man. Is that a nat 20? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's where nat 20s come from on Rangers. Dalren. Uh, Dalren has a 14. Okay. You guys are some largely initiative wizards here. Rur. 22. You guys are actually just initiative wizards. <laughs> Use up all your good dice on the initiative, and then you never hit anything. <laughs> all right, Rets. False. This guy crits things all the time. Well, he doesn't crit them, but he hits them all the time. He's like the best. <laughs> Let me flippy here. See, the fun slash difficult part of playing in an actual table that I'm not used to yet is juggling 20 books. Because usually I just have a bunch of Chrome tabs open, and then that, that works easily enough on its own. But now I've got all this paper I have to work with. I have to find their initiatives. I rolled that into my phone like a smart person. <laughs> At least okay. you're saving RAM. Yeah. Saving That's electrons. Saving mm -hmm. electrons. 
right, one so step at a time. We'll run out of electrons one yeah, day. Right, it's really this man's slow. Doing a service. <laughs> what was yours, Doran? Fourteen. Fourteen. That's what I thought. Yeah, fourteen. Okay, yeah, he's below you. Um, this is an eighteen. Does anybody have whereabouts in eighteen? I feel like I, you had I was eight. twenty-two. Move them all. Yes. These more. <laughs> eh. That's probably the last one for. Really started scooting it. Okay, now we're good. Okie dokie, so it's gonna be bippity boppity. Rant. And then a hard one. Dalren. Rant. Rant. Okay. You guys are getting some, some <coughs> gigas high rolls uh, setting up on these initiatives here. So, Esvis. First to react, the ranger scouting, ready for action. Can I even see them since I have a conga line of party members in front of me? I'm gonna right give now. them cover. <laughs> but uh, mechanically, they only have lesser cover because if there is nothing but creatures between you and your target, no matter if there are four of them <laughs> in a five foot hallway, it's still technically lesser cover. But I'm gonna say they at least have regular cover, but you can just. Shoot down this hall at the general screeching shapes of large rats. Okay. Three because, and I mean, they're, they're pretty big, chunky rats. And oh. they're jumping around. Rats don't really stay on the ground. These things are, like, leaping and lashing and biting. So you can take some pot shots. Fair enough. Okay, so... I will mark this rat back here. Back rat. Okay. Back rat. As... As my prey, <laughs> I don't like that rat in particular. Yum. You. And I'm going to take a hunted shot on it. Okay. And apparently, I'm going to have to um, uh, Big Lebowski bowling this. <laughs> to try you shoot it down the side. You shoot it down the <laughs> side. Down the right side. There we the go. Hall. Okay. Stay along the hallway. All right. So uh, first shot. Uh, Twenty-three. Uh, Twenty-three will hit. And second shot. Um, is an unnatural 20. Okay. So, regular. Okay, so 20 will also hit. So both your arrows are going to connect with the farthest back rat. Okay, so um, if it matters for the hunted shot, these these dice are rolled together to for the purposes of overcoming resistance. The rat does not and... have any resistance. Okay. <laughs> I did not even prompt you for a knowledge check because it's a rat and it doesn't do anything that a knowledge check is going to help you with. So It does just, rat things. Yeah, to save us like 30 seconds of me rolling it, it's a rat. It okay. does rat stuff. Okay. It probably has diseases. It's a rat. Uh, it takes 10 points of damage it from does. two arrows. <laughs> <laughs> There is a rat. It cannot suffer 10 points of damage. It's a particularly large rat, but as Esmus masterfully launches two arrows past literally all of the team, <laughs> he hits the furthest back rat as it emerges out from some rubble and just pop, pop, two hits. <laughs> Leaving it with one action left. Is it mastery or magic? Uh. <laughs> um... Well then, now I can move my new prey. So now the rat, the the other rat in front, not the, because I'm just gonna say I can't see that rat because it looks like a hard you corner. Probably can't see that rat. Yeah, it looks like a hard corner. So now that rat is my prey. New prey. <laughs> my guys at this rat. He knows what's coming. <laughs> he know what he did. Um, I hope everyone likes burnt rat. Um, and I will fire off uh, electric arc and make it jump from the one rat to the one behind it. I'll give you, you can just barely see that other rat surging out, and you can target them both in electric arcs. So they're going to make reflex saves. Now, what the rats do have is fast. He failed anyway. But what the rats do have is fast. He's going to succeed. Uh, one failure, one success. So it's a one takes all, one takes half. Okay. Um, five. So five damage on the rat right in front of Buford. Two damage on the rat deeper into the room. I don't know if you could really do anything with your one action. Shield. Okay, that's fair. That's a fantastic one action. Mm -hmm. Ruin, a lightning, a two arrows and a lightning bolt surge past you. I guess it doesn't surge past you. She just makes the arc appear between these two. And it now smells vaguely of burning rat in here. Sorry. Uh, I reckon I'm going to hold my turn because I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do about large rats. All right, buddy. Okay, I, uh, I have my shield up here, like bracing for a thing, and I just see things like flying by me, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, like this is, now yeah, you see, this is why we brought Esmus. Um, <laughs> that was really impressive, actually. <laughs> Can't um, deny that one, really. That's, pretty, that's a pretty good bar for a first level character. Okay, and then I'm just going to, uh, 
like whack a mole, just bring down my hammer and try and just like. Can you throw the torch on the ground again? Ah, uh, yeah. I actually probably would. Torch. I picked up the torch, but I don't know if I would have been carrying it around because it's pretty light and like it's you got, daytime. You got, yeah, daytime day coming in from the two lights. Yeah. Yeah. Two lights and a lot okay, of these so I'll give you more hammers in hand. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these walls aren't as in together as I had previously thought. They are not, died. no. The Citadel is kind of falling apart. Okay, so I am going to try and whack a mole over here. Uh, well, with a 12, I probably do not whack it as 12 much 12 is, as in I... fact, going to miss. I, I, I could have figured, I guess. They do have fast. They have they fast. They do have fast. They are angry, screechy, and they're fast. Okay, uh, I am going to step, just to make sure I get out of uh, everybody's way, I'm going to step to... Uh, just, uh, need to do the other side. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Past the ramp. Step past Step it. further into the room. Okay. Further into the room, and I'm like, okay, <clears throat> this time for sure. And just come down and try and hit again. Uh, with a, eh, another 12. Another 12, still not going to hit the rat. So you are dancing with a large, angry rat. Yeah, uh, it's hard to hit. They're and real as, fast. Yeah, as he goes, he is just going to commence biting. <laughs> because that's the, he is also just going to go nuts on you. He does not understand any semblance of tactics. All he understands is bite and scratch. So 19 AC. Um, well, if do I have to consciously raise my shield? Yeah, if you did not take a raised shield I did action not that raise, time, then yeah. you are. So I have 17, actually. So with your shield down, as you move around trying to pound jumps on this thing. Jumps at my face. It, it absolutely jumps at your face. <laughs> uh, you leave yourself uh. wide open <gasps> for this rat to just fly <laughs> up at you. So you see Buford trying to pound a little rat. Esbis, for 30 feet away behind four people. <laughs> <laughs> instantly. Lightning jumps between the two of them. This rat's barely still alive, and now it's mad and it fight me on the foot. <laughs> Buford slams on a hammer, and the rat just goes... <laughs> <laughs> and you are going to take six damage. Oh my god. Okay. Do I need to make a fortitude save? As it, you sure do. <laughs> As it uh, critically oh, bites you. With oh a uh, 15. 15? You are good for now, other than the fact that there's a rat attached to your face. <laughs> like, ah, get it off! Get Who it is off. going to bite you again? <laughs> get it off! <laughs> for seven damage. <laughs> It's what was the first one? All over Six. Again. It's done 13 to you in these oh, two bites. <laughs> Why? I love oh first level shenanigans. The third bite, however, is going to miss. But, uh, <laughs> Dolren, you can see your friend buddy in front of you getting absolutely <laughs> savaged oh. by a giant it's, rat. It's, <laughs> trying. it's not even that big. Is it's trying to big for tear out my eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> it's going for the Not the bear. I need another fortitude bear. save, though, because he oh, did right, bite right, you again. Right, 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 right. Oof, that one was not good. That was a 10. Okay. Oh, the good news is it's a red. So, Dalrin. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Dalrin was going to go and engage this other rat here, but then he sees that basically <laughs> poor Buford is literally getting mauled to death by a rat. Uh, so, <laughs> he's, he's going to uh, kind of blink for a bit and then just flip the flip his uh, goose arm around and... Um, rip that hook into the back of the rat and slash down to rip it off of him. All right. And you got, yeah, you got reach and you got sharp here. Well, unfortunately, it's only a 10 because I'm really worried about hitting this my This rat friend. is the legend. This is the yeah. final boss here. This <laughs> rat specifically. That's going to miss. All right. Uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll take another swipe at it. I'm, I'm really kind of concerned. Oh, oh my God. God. That's like a, a, a three. Yep, still not gonna hit it. Uh, <laughs> I would just like to read. A, I would like to read a bit of flavor text in the bestiary. Although its bite alone is not lethal, except to the very young or the very old. <laughs> Which are you, Buford? Very young. <laughs> or the very gimped. So, yeah. uh, uh, so uh, Dalren is uh, going to actually run around this. One, two, three, four, and kind of come to over here. Is there anything like monstrous waiting outside this hole in the wall ready to jump on me? Uh, as you move, I could move the entire thing and make you, you reshuffle up no. the minis, but no, there is All right. there is uh, just grass outside and then He's the going bluff. one further. Like uh, one further, like twenty feet beyond the outside of this hole here, the bluffs raise up uh, yeah. further back behind the citadel. And I can actually uh, and step it's just tree one line. more. I got enough movement for that. Do those take 
Do they take attacks of opportunity? Are those threatened squares? Uh, attacks of opportunity very are rare. rare. rare they they oh. don't happen very yeah, often. That is no longer an intrinsic mechanic of oh, second okay. edition. Things have to have attack of opportunity, and very few stuff does. Okay. So you can you can actually have very mobile combats like this because most garbage. Like this rat currently murdering Buddy <laughs> uh, isn't going to have attack of opportunity. Okay. Or you know, all of the level one going to in this party, they don't have in. any either. Alrighty, Roar is going to join the, the battle here. <sighs> He's desperately trying to protect his newfound friend here, Buddy, who is being obliterated by a large rat. Disappointed in the outcome of the last six seconds of my life, <laughs> I'm going to pull out my crossbow, load a bolt, and I'm going to blast this rat off your face. All right, you take a shot. The way is now clear. I blasted the rat 20. off the face. Natural 20. Disappointed, is... lazy, there. It's <laughs> <Okay>. dead. <laughs> it's a light crossbow, so it does what, D6? Yeah. Roll me a D6, because if you roll one, it only does two damage, and it actually doesn't kill the rat. There's no modifiers on your light crossbow shot. Mm -hmm. Do you not have any D6? I had to find it. That's a one. <laughs> Doesn't kill the rat. You critically deal two damage to this rodent. <laughs> there, as see, this, uh, I did it. Squeaky, it's not As this, like, it's this thing not is jumping dead. up on Buford, you put a, a little crossbow bolt through one eye and out the back of its head. And in this <laughs> death's door fury, the rat screams out in pain and rakes and bites harder. <laughs> the rat is Thank the rat her. is the rat is secretly an orc this that has worse. rage. <laughs> The other rat in the room is going to run towards the spooky loud noises coming from the hallway here. Uh, the angry, not really clear what's going on, and bite at the first thing it runs into here, which is Ruhr. Crossbow bolts, spell incantations, it's going this way. What's your AC? 14. Cloistered cleric, right? Yes. Uh, so he is going to bite you. And then he's going to critically bite you because these rats are legends. So the first bite. Maybe is I should rage. <laughs> <laughs> I want to rage. As this rat rushes forward, uh, it's gonna lash on you for five damage before realizing you are such a soft, squishy, and easy target, and biting you for a second eight damage. You're gonna take thirteen total. Still okay. take you down? No. Okay, still up. Uh, why why me... would 13 take because me Because you're down. a tiny cleric with 14 AC, so, you know, I had to worry. Uh, give me a two fortitude save. Uh, I failed one, past one. Those aren't numbers. Uh, 10. Don't assume it's DC. Okay, I assumed a 10 would fail. How dare but you assume But the other one was like a DC. 20. How dare you assume his DC. These rats have defied all expectations. Yes. There is, there is no assumption here any further. <clears throat> all right, Esvis, round two. You opened this with such competence, and as six seconds have passed, everything has fallen apart <laughs> spectacularly. In the most level one of combats I think I've ever witnessed. Uh, so Esfis will actually back up. <laughs> Newfound respect for these creatures. Newfound respect for these rats. We'll back up so that I'm 30 feet from from both. I will take a and I, with full cover again, or with cover. Right? You said regular cover, right? Yeah, regular cover. You should do. So you should do a narrow hollow with two of your teammates. Right? Esfis is just. So your hand is actually the one that is further back. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the one that is on Buford's face. Is yes. your Esfis! Esfis! <laughs> and, and Esfis just pulls two arrows and will hunted shot <laughs> the the rat that is the prey that is on that is currently on Buddy's face. <laughs> Can't believe I'm doing this. You guys have taken thirty damage from three negative one creatures. So <laughs> Level the, negative one creatures. So the first shot. Uh, is a 15 armor class. 15, with you trying to get it around your team in the hallway, is it's a difficult to angle that shot, so it's just, it's barely going to skirt by, uh, sailing past Del Ren. All right, so and then the second shot um, is a 16. <laughs> God, I want to give it to you because rules is written that hits, but I said he has regular cover, which means it doesn't by one. <laughs> Well, no, two people are two people are gone. It's only one and a half people now. So that is AC sixteen and a half, which is still higher than sixteen. 16. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
with Buford flailing and his massive shield and warhammer in the way, it's really difficult. He's making it even harder to land these hits, and that is also just barely, but just barely gonna miss. Esvis grazing this rat. Esvis frustrated will just fire a third grazing shot. Grazing the one health rat <laughs> will just fire a third shot. Just frustrated. So we're only gonna plus one to this. Ah, 12! I still miss! <laughs> <laughs> He's trying, Buford! He's throwing it so many points! I swear to God! <laughs> Not the time to fail, Esmus! It's all up to you. It's all up to you. You have an action left, I believe. No, no. that's three. Yeah, that's it. No. 100 shots, one action, isn't it? Yeah, but I had to move. Oh, you stepped. Oh, Resme! Resme will go, All right, it's about to get bright in here. Um, and I will do a electric arc again, um, arcing first to the one in front of uh, Rur, and then to the one that's on Buford's <laughs> face. So jumping this beam of lightning, a flash of electricity in Buford's eyes, going past the long with his entire life. Uh, this, I don't know, you roll anything, it's reflex saves. Yes. yes. So the, uh, the first, oh damn it. That's damage. damage. Bu- uh, the first one, the rat in front of Buford, just going to critically succeed and take no damage. <laughs> yep. I really... And the second rat. Did you pick up the dice we told you not to use? No, it's the other D20. It's the one you wanted me to use. This is the rattiest rat I've the ever seen. The other rat is going to fail and is going to take an amount of damage. Seven. Seven, he dies. The other rat bursts into a uh, singed fur and screeching, <laughs> leaving just the rat on Buford's face. Still um, doing it. He's after your hat. He's after your hat. Iomade protects? I am going to I am going to call on Iomade to protect me from this evil demon rat. <laughs> We're like, Iomade, I have never seen a rat like this. Please send down some healing magic. And uh, I'm going to lay on hands myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing that happened. The only hands that are getting laid on you are oh tiny paws. God. So you heal and for six, and you get plus two status to AC uh, for the remainder of the round. So yes. oh somehow God. this will still find a way to crit you. <laughs> I did better. Well, 20s don't care what your AC is. Don't, exactly. <laughs> don't you put that evil on him. <laughs> okay, so that was one. That was one action. Uh, one yeah, action. hands. So I, this, this rat is going down. I'm going to hit this rat so hard with my golf club. It won't even know. It, oh, ooh, that's 20. Dude, it crit him right back. <laughs> oh, well, it was a oh. 20 on that. No, no, total. it's a uh, total error. Oh, okay. Totally. So uh, when a twenty, a twenty will hit. You will. You lay on hands, steal yourself, and whap this rat with your warhammer. <laughs> what happens? <laughs> it's got one health left. What do you do? I have, I have it. This the rat is still attached to my face. Hammer your. And I. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm imagining. I'm just imagining like. I am a day. Fuck. <laughs> I've got the rat right now. I am a Protect my nose. <laughs> <laughs> They protect my hat, and it's really what's going on here. And I just, and it swishes and it pillows the <laughs> rat against my face and protects me from damage. And the rat just kind of like, and then I can like kind of peel it off. Oh my god. Delicious. Oh, there's nothing heroic about anything that just happened. <laughs> and there's just blood and guts dripping down my chin. And I'm like, well, that that was a. That, quite, that was quite, a thing that happened. That was a series of events that took place. <laughs> as, as, as this is just looking straight at Buford, just... Now, this ain't <laughs> nothing like that one time that I stepped in that crocodile, but, like, I cannot believe you missed it that second time. So, you wait. You stepped into a crocodile, and you didn't flail. That's why we were able to kill it. And now, a rat attacks you. And that's the thing you have a problem but with. They've got beady little eyes, and they're staring at right in my eyes, and I saw its eyes, and it freaked me out, man. I is, can't just sit there and, like, not move. Does this happen move. frequently with you? Do you step into creatures and have them attack your face? Crocodiles and rats and... No. I can help you be friendlier with animals and plants. Animals and plants are never that friendly, I'd say. It's as if the karmic scales have weighed against you for wanton puppy murder. And now the next <laughs> random animals you encountered have give you a, given you a vicious savaging. Yeah, you evil guys, you should have killed those they, puppies. They were evil yeah. puppies. I mean, you're not you're not wrong. They were evil puppies. But, but, the but, they, were, but they, they were still puppies. Like, I would murder you if I were bigger. 
That's what they were saying. Mm -hmm. Glazing over the nature versus nurture argument, we just decided to ignore it and murder them on the spot. Nature versus nurture versus murder. They can't grow up to be evil if they don't grow up. <laughs> modern problems require modern solutions. <laughs> Pathfinder problems require Pathfinder solutions. So, with the once again silence falling through the halls of Citadel Altarian. The heroes having defeated <laughs> The heroes rats. having defeated the monstrous rats. I imagine that this is going to be probably time for a 10 minute rest, most likely. That yes. Is. Good news being that you have doors behind you uh, that you can close up. The bad news slash secondary good news being that this seems to just lead directly to the outside, which isn't the worst thing ever because you know the outside is not full of whatever is in South Citadel Altarian. Oh, we could just go back one room. Oh, you could go, yeah, you could yeah, just go fine. back to one with the shredded like curtains. That's true, you can, either way you want to do it. I'm gonna stay here in the fresh air and focus up. Same here. Um, I, like, I need some focus. <clears throat> I can take a peek at that shield if you want while you're getting patched up. Oh, I man, have to this shield patch could myself. really use some work. So you guys stagger out through the doorway here. Iomade has, in fact, protected. And uh, rest up outside with Buford and Resme refocusing to regain their focus point. Yeah, and keeping watch. You want to keep watch? I'll uh, try to fix. Uh, Dalrin <laughs> offers to try to fix Buford's shield. And I'm going to try and fix my body. <laughs> You're going to try and fix your body from what the rats did to you. So roll me a medicine check. Natural 20. So with a critical success, you will heal yourself for 48. Ooh. Plus a snack. Plus what? A snack. Oh, halfling snack. Are you stupid? Hill yeah. Yeah. You also eat a banana, so you heal for more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's seven. Actual mechanic. And 14, 21, 22 total. So you're healed? Yes. Okay. Very much so. <gasps> bananas. Well, that's, yeah, it's, bananas it's, that's, that's, that's medicine. That's a 10 minute uh, treating yourself while eating a banana and just kind of munching in the corner <clears> and <throat> stitching up what these incredibly <laughs> angry rats have done to you. Uh, I just, like, the three goblin dogs in the front doorway... Did is just severe. They are each just That's like severe? their numbers are dramatically higher than the rat's numbers. The rat is a low because they're all garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, well, you know. Look, you can't. Pathfinder one or Pathfinder Justice level one here. How the so, hell were the goblin dogs as severe? It's three level. It's a three first level creatures. I mean, that's as severe for four first for level four players. Solid but yeah. to be fair, you have a slight numerical advantage, so this is yeah. going to be a little more in your favor because there are five of you instead of four. But you can also only fight two of them at a time, assuming you don't run into the room. If you if you uh, fill if you have like two big front lines to fill the doorway, yeah. But regardless, you sit around, you heal yourself up, um, you focus, you focus, you praying to Iomedai Resme. Not really. What do you do to regain focus? Uh, Resme, um, if anyone's looking, um, will actually notice that, um, her eyes change color and her hair changes color a little bit too. Um, her posture changes. Um, she actually reaches out, um, to her brother and uses, um, his mind and his personality and his memories, uh, to refocus herself. Okay. So, uh, Buford, what's 10 minutes of refocusing for you? Uh, I'm going to uh, be here. I am saying a prayer to Iomade and uh, thanking her for all the blessings she's given my family and me and throughout the life and giving me strength. And I'm You're saying to... grace over your hammer, basically, is, <laughs> yeah. is what's going on. Okay, yeah. I dig it. Um, and if you got, y'all don't mind here, I, I wouldn't mind an extra 10 minutes to uh, cast one more thing, or ask it for another lesson and then maybe refocus again. <laughs> I mean, you, you're outside here early in the morning. You realistically could take about as long as you want out here. Uh, you you well, that... have a, another large bluff ahead of you, so nothing's going to explode out of the cliff face, probably. Uh, on... if... oh, sorry to interrupt. Um, if I'd noticed that Buford was still injured, I do have a medic kit. I could try a medicine check. Buford oh, yeah. is definitely still injured. Okay. So you, you could try to effect. treat him while he focuses, absolutely. Yeah, the blondest face is not entirely not his. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see. Give me a medicine check. Okay. Uh, 19 total. Mm -hmm. 19 total? Yeah, you'll heal him for 2d8. So while you're refocusing... Medicine checks have been fantastic today. Saying, yeah. these, uh, saying these prayers to Iomadai, Esfis is using his knowledge to try to bandage you up somewhat. Uh, 13. Aha, it's perfect. That is that is healed then. And last but not least, we um, have a craft check yep. from Dalren to see if he can repair the shield. 
So that's uh, uh, 13. It's a, uh, it's an old piece <clears throat> that uh, Buford's had in his family for some time, and he doesn't use it terribly often. So it's not it wasn't in the best of upkeep in the first place. It could use some like proper servicing, maybe like at a real forge. It's proven to be yeah, difficult like I've been to, to, do. to really do anything with it out here in the field so far. You're confident that you could you could, but it's none of you are great at this shield repairing thing. I mean you don't use a shield. You can't learn to blacksmith regardless <laughs> of your best efforts. Yep. So it's still got that damage on it. So, this room, I would assume there is nothing of salvageable and legible Looking anything. through here, this might be like one of the worst rooms that you would come across because not only is it, it's exactly what you would have wanted, it's a records room. This is what you'd come to Breach L to try to find, to mm -hmm. try to suss out, but this is nearly destroyed. Uh, on top of that, while they left the full plates, uh, the decorative full plate set up in the entryway, it appears that whenever the Order of the Nail left Citadel Altarian, they did take most of their records. There's not nearly <laughs> as much shredded paper and parchment around the room as there should be for how many shelves and storage, uh, storage containers and file cabinets there were. A lot of them were clearly empty beforehand. Their priorities seem to be more on bringing information and records with them than these decorative suits of armor that their coin could easily replace. Hmm. So, long story short, there is nearly nothing for you in here. But, as you look through the room, uh, picking up one, uh, looking under some of the shelves and whatnot, uh, picking up all the ones the rat had come out from, you find a badly decomposed, mutilated corpse underneath it that the rats appeared to have eaten into and been nesting in. <clears throat> and as you look it over, though, the rats are interested in the flesh and the meaty bits and have ripped through his clothing. I mean, it's impossible to tell those of you at this point. Ripped through whatever clothing they had, but didn't bother with some of the bottles, the flasks he had in his belt. There are two potions of some sort there. But, and I've figured this out now, identifying a potion is a 10-minute rest action in Pathfinder 2. Per potion. Uh, these are, I would say you can tell these are probably the same potion, okay. so I would let you identify both of them with a 10-minute rest. But if you just find a potion, second edition, that's actually a 10-minute rest thing to try to identify the potion. Okay. I mean, but I'm you, happy to take a look at it if you guys would like. I mean, there is... Not yeah. currently a massively pressing time issue. If you want to take another ten minutes, because Buford wanted to take ten more minutes to focus again. Sure. So well, he, he would have. for healing. Yeah, he would have. Well, there did was that. Did you not want to do that anymore after you got healed? I got healed full. Okay. So if you want to rest another ten minutes right now to identify these potions, <laughs> yeah, you can. We sure. can both take a look at one. Yeah. I yeah. can try and fix my stupid S shield. So while they're yeah, doing that. Yeah, that's more attempts on the shield. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, it's craft for identifying alchemy. Yeah. Oh, it is craft, not arcana. Uh, it is craft, and you have to be trained. Um, okay. Well, um, it's okay because I just focused to get my ancestral memories back again. Uh, so I will, um, concentrate again and reach back, um, into one of my past selves and, uh, become trained in craft. And All right. You'll get yourself a plus one when you do it. And yes. Mm. Mm. I'm going to use my hero point for this I session? totally forgot to hand out hero points. I had so much technological stuff going on. I have not handed out a single hero point. Oh, I'm going point to give you my fake hero session. point? I didn't even give you the session rerolls. <laughs> I, I have been so, so focused on getting this all up and running. This okay. is all so new and different. I totally forgot. Kados is sitting here full of hero points. Nobody got any. Kados is disappointed that in is me. That is way better. I have um, let us down. Uh, 21. Uh, with a 21, you would be able to identify that they are a pair of minor healing potions. Bringing you up to a total of four minor healing potions that you now have. So Excellent. we have a total of four minor healing potions, one lesser antidote, and one lesser something else. Anti plague. Anti plague. Anti plague. Okay. So I rolled a six. I can tell you mine is liquid. <laughs> it's a it's healing water. potion. It's probably meant for drinking. It might be meant for stabbing. Unclear. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured that the is liquid's a... unclear. Oh, can I ride my uh, try my fixing my shield real quick? Yeah, go. You can go to give me another craft check. Oh, this is now I'm keeping watch. 
Mm -hmm. You keep watching now. I ended up with a 20 minute break here as he found hey, some things of interest. 20. Are you trained? Yes. I guess it doesn't actually matter. Your shield's only missing three health. So uh, you go, yeah. you would definitely be able to finally, given 20 minutes to really sit down with both of you guys pouring <laughs> over yeah. it, you would manage to do what you need to do <clears throat> to get that shield that back to uh, get that dent out of you. Oh, man, I'm so glad the dense mechanic didn't make it in the full release. Yeah. This, uh, <laughs> this is so much better. This is actually so much better. Anyway, uh, you're able to get your shield back repaired and ready for the group of you to dive back into Citadel Altarian next week as we continue the Age of Ashes. Rusty Rat Shank Town, yep. <laughs> as this may be come to be known, as our level one adventurers steamroll through a severe encounter with no difficulty before getting absolutely bullied by some level <laughs> negative one rodents. Oh god, ours. <laughs> Our is the new B. No, don't you, no, don't you even start that. Don't you even die. start that. It's only once we start yeah, there's, actually there's dying. There's definitely not enough evidence for that yet. And nobody went down, so that's good. But thank you guys all for being here. Thank you for sticking with us through. I know we have the occasional sound delays and little lags. I'm going to see if I can sort that out for next week. But up the technical issues to have stream one of this new setup, that's pretty solid, and I'll take that. Uh, I will only understand better how to use this Arkin Forge, and perhaps we'll... Uh, refiddle my setup a bit so it's not entirely that far away from me for moving things. This this is a much different production for us, and I appreciate all of you sticking through, joining us on our adventure as we live out the Age of Ashes. Mm. So, that's going to be it for us today. Good night, everybody. Sweet dreams. I guess what I have now. An outro. It's outro music. Nice. It's not an outro, but it's outro music. So I'm...